All right, all right, all right. It's time for some Saturday Night Box Song. All right, we're live. Uh, watching this Matias versus uh, who's this? Uriel Matias versus who? I don't know. Just starting out. Just uploaded a video. You guys can watch it after we're done with this card. Um, and yeah, man. And then gonna play with me? Yeah, I'll play with you, little fat man. Choo, 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 choo. Ain't they got a poster for this joint I could use as a thumbnail? I was hoping it was going to be uh, Lipinets versus Abdul Kakarov, but, you know, it is what it is. Yesterday's card was a hell of a card, man. Hell of a card, man. I mean, my goodness. Shit, my goodness. Okay. I don't know, man. Why do I keep seeing these horses? Well, I'm going to go. So, yeah, man. So, Mikey Garcia. Uh, I saw a picture of this guy, man. Jesus Christ, he's gained a lot of weight. If he bought the fight Manny Pacquiao, it ain't no time soon. Tell you that. I don't know much about this Hawkins guy, so this is going to be interesting to see how he fares against Lipinets. I know Lipinets. I don't know this Hawkins guy, but uh, damn, Subriel Matias is catching him with some st I mean, I'm bugging out. Yeah, Subriel Matias versus Hawkins. What's him call it? Is fighting Clayton. And I don't know much about Clayton. I'm, I'm not familiar with that guy, I'm being honest. So this, I'm getting a fresh look at this kid, you know, and, and I'm going to just take it for what it is because I don't know what he can do. I don't know what he can't do. If you guys know more about Clayton than I do, by all means, fill me in. Should I, should, should, should we be looking, you know, you know, and you know. I was rocking Rusty, was rocking Kid Carlos. Chilling, chilling. Watching Subriel Matias do the business over here with Hawkins. And Subriel is looking real strong. He's backing him off. Looking real strong out here, real strong out here. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. That was a hell of a card yesterday, man. Ahmed was goody. All right, let me download this joint. I'm not going to play with you right now. I'm going to watch this fight. I'm play with me. Maybe. I'm going to be mad at me. I will. 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 All right. I will, baby. All right, all right, all right, all right, enough. I was rocking new country. I'm chilling, chilling, watching this Matias Hawkins joint. They getting it popping. Says I got new comments and I can't even get to them. Well, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm saying. And yeah, man. So we in this joint. Uh, you know what I'm saying. Let's 
Man, Twitter is a silly place, man. I have to say that. Twitter is a very, very silly place. The stuff people argue about on Twitter, man, I have to say that Twitter is by far one of the most useful, but one of the most annoying apps, man. You get random people coming up to you, talking to you about stuff like, bro, ho, wait, 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 ho, ho, la, wait, I don't give a goddamn rat's ass what you think about anything. Why are you talking to me? That's how I be feeling when I'm on Twitter, man. You come in on something, somebody you just start to say, hey, 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 hold on, wait a minute, wait. What you need to know is I don't give a damn about what you think about anything. So stop it. That's what you need to know. Watching this hawk is fight. Malik Hawk fight in the boat. Now a Malik Hawk fight. Ow! It's the fuck. Malik Hawk is fight. Man, I don't know why the chitty chat ain't moving. The chitty chat need to move. We got the private chat. We got the chitty chat. The chitty chat. I don't know. It's stuck or something. I don't know what's going on here, man. Let me see. Uh, let me put this link in here. Put this link in here. Yeah, man, it's wild out here. Watching this Malik Hawk fight. It's the Malik Hawk fight. Subriel Matias Hawk fight. Subriel fight him up. The fire is annoying. The Subriel Hawk fight. Why is it annoying? Yeah, Matias ain't got no respect for this guy, man. He's just walking him down, bullying him, hitting him with hard shots. But from what I remember, Suriel is a very strong puncher. Strong, strong guy, athletic, not the best up boxing acumen, but but he hits hard. You need to be a certain kind of guy to beat this guy. Just get to one thing and have to get out there. You know, so yeah, man, I and mean, that's what's going on. Notice was taking so long. Babe says this might come down to who's in the best condition. They're throwing a lot of punches now, and they're taking them. That's true. But Subriel, he's just got a lot more weight on his shots, man. He just seems like a, the heavier-handed guy. Hawkins wanted this to be a finesse fight, it seems. I don't know much about Hawkins, but it seems that he wanted this to be a fight of finesse, and Subriel ain't having that. Hey, what's going on, I'm mad with talking with Yo, what's going on? Yo, did you rewatch the Lomachenko fight? I was going to ask you something else, but I just wonder uh, why you scored I've it. it. I've seen it about two times since then, but that was the same week of, well, the weekend of the fight. I haven't seen it uh, since then. I've only seen it two times. How did you score it? I had it the same way, man. It's just... All right. Look, I, the, I'm going to tell you something, Ahmed. The reason I don't want to spend a lot of time on the yeah, score yeah. of that fight is because people made up their minds that they're not going to like Lomachenko. So the second that this dude, something happened, forget about arguing about that shit. You're wasting yeah, your yeah. time. No, 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 I'm not I just want you to know how you scored because I was speaking to Michael Montero. He also had a draw. I just disagree, but he did say he had a rewatch... Uh, Seven five. I did about eight four. I, I see people like, yeah. You know I'm not a Lomas. Like you know I'm not a like a like. I a, never said you were. Like. No no no. I'm 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 just prefacing it. You understand that? You know that I'm not one of these guys that was over the moon over Lomachenko. Like if he lost, he lost. You know what I mean? Like I don't give a shit. I don't have a horse yeah. in that race. All I'm saying is, look, I scored it a draw. I didn't. The, you know all these other cats. Of course, Teofimo Lopez is fanboys, and we know who they are. Of course, they're going to say, yeah, man, it was wide for Lopez. And, of course, the people that you know don't like Lomachenko, of course I they're going to take that as an opportunity to say that he lost. That's why I'm like, look, I'm not wasting time on those people, yeah, bro. I, I'll give it brief. I'm not going to spend too much. But I will say this. For the first eight rounds, I found it hard to give Lomachenko more than one round, if I'm being honest. Uh, and, I know and some I, people... 
Look, look see. Some, people, I some, people, some people gave Lomachenko the second round, right? A lot of people I saw, they gave him the second round. I didn't. I didn't. All right, I, no. had it a clean sweep. I had it a clean sweep from round five to six. The six I gave to Lomachenko. And I think I, you could have given him the eighth. That's the old, that's the only round I thought that he clearly may have won out the first eight, if I'm correct. I thought it was six nil after six, and then I think the seventh. I'll have to rewatch it, but to my memory, Lomachenko only came on strong from the eighth to eleventh round. How many rounds? The eight, nine, ten, Look, eleven. Although I there was a round. Gonna notice, I think what you're going to notice when you rewatch that fight, I think what you're going to notice is. The rounds you thought were competitive when they were both letting their hands go, what you're going to notice is Lopez isn't hitting anything. Occasionally, yeah, yeah. he gets off a decent body shot. Everybody's like acting like he tore up Lomachenko's body. No, he was shooting singles to the body. Those weren't even combinations to the body. They Which were rounds singles. are you talking about? The early rounds? The later, the rounds the later rounds when Lomachenko finally started throwing punches because the early rounds, I only gave them the Teofimo because Loma's not throwing. So I have to give them the U because... At least you're throwing, you know. At least you're throwing punches. So I gotta give. Who, the... Who's who's disputing the later rounds? We all know Lomachenko came on strong. Like uh, obviously the eleven one was a bad scorecard, but I I could see any score between seven five uh, Lopez to about even nine three. I can three, see I'd seven. See. Look honestly, I can see seven five. If you told me okay, I got a seven five Lopez, I could see that. I could see like yeah, you yeah. know. Yeah, that I mean, because then that would mean that you know I might have been off by a round, which is entirely possible. Like, yeah, you know, seven five. That's that could have it could have happened that way. But sir, like, come on, one judge had it eleven yeah, one, a, eleven and over the one. other two. Though, those are reasonable scorecards, I think. But I had eight four, so one round wide, I, I could see that. So I'll, you, I'll just you see need, this. I think you need to watch that fight again, bro. Honestly, and, and once again, I'm not trying to convince you. I can only explain my own rationale and how I got there. I could I could watch it again, but I I I thought that fight was similar to Klitschko Fury. Not not the entire fight, but for eight rounds, that's the same feeling. I thought for eight rounds, I can't give Lomachenko any of these rounds. Just like Klitschko, the guy's walking around. He's not throwing or landing. So he started. Hard. Look, 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 look. I'll say it was at the end of the fifth. I believe it was at the end of the fifth, which I gave to Lopez. I still gave the fifth to Lopez. I think it was the end of the fifth where Lomachenko finally started throwing punches, but he started throwing punches late in the round. Not enough for you to give him the round. In the sixth, uh, I gave him that round. And from the sixth onward, right? Now, I believe I gave Lopez a round in between there, in between the sixth and the twelfth. I would have had to because I gave the, the first seven, You're talking round. about the seventh. Then, yeah. So as soon as... What I noticed about the fight is as soon as Lomachenko started throwing punches, he couldn't miss Lopez. He literally right. couldn't miss him. And he started backing him off. Lopez threw some punches back. There were exchanges. But I reiterate, the work from Lomachenko was just much cleaner. You didn't have to look for the shots. Lopez was getting off decent shots to the body. And like I said, it was one at a time. Those weren't combination punches. It was one at a time. So, like, my take on it is, as soon as Loma decided to show some offense, Lopez couldn't really do anything about it because he wasn't doing right, much. Yeah. Of it. He's getting I'm hit. not going to argue too. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to argue. You're in touch. But I have seen Lomachenko fans. I'm not saying you. I'm not accusing you. Some of them are saying it was a clear draw. It's a very close fight. I, I, I don't call it. No, no. I, yeah. And this is where I differ from them. I don't think it was a clear draw. I don't think. I'm saying that that's what I had when I looked yeah. down at my scorecard and I looked at what I had. That's what I had, and and I'm not a Lomachenko. Yeah, I'm just saying that I agree with your point at the beginning that some Lopez fans are saying it's like a whitewash. I think Lomachenko clearly won about three rounds in that fight. At the same time, it was no robbery. I've seen some guys, the usual suspects. Uh, I'm not even going to mention, but some of the channels, you, you know, saying that Lomachenko got robbed, this and that. That was not a robbery. That was the right decision. It's just we had one scorecard that had a white, but I was just going to say. There are um, some people like yourself who agreed with yourself. Like they had your draw. I think it's Michael Montero, Crawford, Ward. I just disagree. I thought Lopez did enough to win, but I will rewatch it. I just think Lomachenko took far too long. Uh, he took way too long to get going. By the time he got going, I think it was a bit too late. But if let you're me closer, then um, let, let, let me argue over wrong. 
Let me address um John Gregg. No, I'm not a Loma fanboy. You hate him because of the color of his skin, and you expect me to give a damn about your racial biases. I don't care about none of that stuff. I know who you are, John Gregg. I know you the guy from I think Facebook. You just hate him because <laughs> no, nah, yeah, because these dudes like yo, I don't want to play your stupid little tribalist game. You think that I'm supposed to like every fighter just because you got something in common with him. I don't give a shit about you, so I don't give a shit about who you got something in common with. I'm not a Loma fanboy, nor have I ever been. I've been yeah, saying yeah. for the past three years, he's not pound for pound number one. He's never been pound for pound number one on my list. Never. Never. I Julius, told can I ask you a question? I told y'all before. Hold on. I told y'all before. This dude, he's not going to be around for a long time. I've been yeah. saying this for three years. I've been saying this. If you spent that much time in the amateurs and you went pro at that age, you not going to be around in the pros for that long. So don't pretend that I was uh, super duper high. The difference between me and you is I don't hate him for his pigment. You do. So go go somewhere else with your hate that you got in your heart, bro. Because I don't give a shit about none of that. If you was really about something, yo, go outside with the hate in your heart and do something with it. But don't come around here talking that bullshit. I just want to see this. Uh, it's a question. It's more of a rhetorical question. And it's not just addressed to you. It's addressed to other people. We all know Lomachenko is a favorite. So it's no shame in picking Lomachenko if you're wrong. I personally wasn't confident in picking either guy. And I don't have a channel. So I don't... Like you, I got... And Michael Montero, guys like that who got a channel and, you know, doing a weekly podcast or whatever, breakdown. I understand you guys got to pick. You can't sit on the shelf. But I did think Lomachenko's favorite. When he got close, I thought Lopez might pull it off because I think about weight and size and that. But I'm not going to say I picked Lopez. I didn't. Yeah, but this end. is the other thing. This is the other thing. Yeah. For the people that pick Loma, right? And, and, and I think that there's too many egos involved because that's, that's how I look at it, that there's a lot of egos involved. And there's just a lot of tribalist crap where you can't talk about a boxing match and just enjoy it. It's a boxing match. What's fun is you don't know. That's the fun part. Watching a fight. And you know what? Sometimes you're going to be wrong. Would it be yeah. fun? Would it be exciting if you knew what was going to happen all the time? No. Yeah, exactly. Not. Yeah, I know. Yeah, right, you're right. So Lomachenko yeah. lost. Do you think that I'm losing sleep over that? Because I'm going to tell you yeah. that I'm not. It's fun. Yeah. Lopez is now the man. Lopez. That makes me happy. Why? Because jo that 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 makes Javante look bad. And I yeah. like that it makes him look bad. That makes me happy. If anything makes me happy, it's knowing that Javante for three years had the same opportunity <laughs> that Teofimo had, and you chose to run away. He didn't. And I like that he's from my city. I like that about him. So yeah, it's good for I ain't boxing, mad at I think. all. It's good what for happened? American boxing. It's good for American boxing. He won. He could become a future pay per view star, I reckon, uh, in the future. Like, America doesn't have a guy. Like, look, Canelo's almost 31 or something. Lopez is a young guy. I think I think for boxing in America, and that's why I've been on ESPN and him winning. I think, uh, I thought he won clearly, that it was good, I think, for boxing uh, in the future. So, I uh, like, yeah, I, I agree with pretty much what you say. I was just saying, I think there's a lot of people, and it works either way. The people that picked Lopez to win, they're saying, uh, you know, they, they had their line signed. And then the guys that picked uh, Lomachenko, I think this it might have reflected their scorecard. Although I don't think that it should be like that. Just because you pick someone, that shouldn't affect how you score a fight. Like, you know, we all could. Yeah, be like, exactly. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't tell you. I'm not telling you that I had it a draw because, oh, I'm trying. Like, no, dog, I had it a draw because that's how I scored it. I scored it live with beats. And yeah. the whole first half of the fight, you can hear me and Beats talking about it. They're like, yo, this dude, he not doing enough, and he got a severe deficit. And then when I seen him coming on, he's throwing punches. I'm I'm scoring the fight on Twitter live. I'm scoring it on Twitter, posting it. And I'm literally telling you round by round who I gave the round and why. Now, if you had it another way, that's fine. I don't care. Like, I'm not going to yeah. be mad at you over that. Like, why would I be mad at you over that? You might have had it another way. That's cool. But don't, it's it's people out there. That's not you, I'm mad, right? Yeah. They yeah. have an agenda, like bro. You act like, and they act like we don't know that they have an agenda. Like bro, you have an agenda. I don't want to hear nothing about boxing from you. Yeah, I get you. I get you. Yeah, you're right about that. I, the only person I had a problem with uh, who had a draw was Ward, and I'm not talking about the overall scorecard. Round by round, his, his scorecard was all over the place. I think I believe 
He was giving a lot of the early rounds to Lomachenko. That's where I think there's a problem. Well, I've seen some people... I think some people have a draw. Ward is not the most. Ward had a yeah. really shitty scorecard recently. Yeah. I can't remember what fight it was, but it was Brandt really and, shitty. No, Branton. No, no, no. Ramirez and Pastol, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was another yeah. fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He That's had a really shitty like. scorecard. So I wouldn't go off a of Ward per se, but I know, look, Crawford had it a draw, and Ward had it a draw. Teddy Atlas had it a draw. And I think Juan Manuel Marquez had it a draw. I no, think Marquez had um, Lomachenko 8 4. I believe that's what. Oh, he's he's thinking. bugging out. I didn't. I didn't see. <laughs> he's bugging out because if we're gonna call a spade a spade, bro, I did not see Loma win eight. That, rounds. That's a bad I joke. I didn't see that. I didn't see that. So but he I, had I Carto, He had Carto beating Canelo, and to be fair, I don't think Carto won more than about three, four rounds against Canelo in that fight. I think you, Canelo. You, clearly... you know, Ahmed. You cannot yeah. trust. You cannot trust Marquez to be unbiased when it comes to Canelo. Like you yeah. already know that, so. You yeah, know that, see. like. But even Teddy Atlas, and I think Teddy Atlas, you know, the guy I respect a lot of the things he says, but he had that Triple G Canelo rematch, uh, 117, 111 to Triple G. That rematch wasn't that that white. That I was know, a close fight. But, but, but if we qualify, see, this is my thing. Teddy Atlas had Tyson Fury win in the first fight, right? Yeah. This is my thing. Teddy Atlas had Tyson Fury win in the first Wilder fight. And Teddy Atlas, like myself, had Manny Pacquiao win in the Jeff Horn fight. You know what I mean? So I'm not going to just blow him off as soon as I, like, uh, as soon as he says something that I disagree with. I, you know, I, agree, I agree with that. Yeah. I because, agree with that. Because I think that Teddy is looking for the same things, or I should say I'm looking for the same things in a round, I believe, that Teddy is looking for. That's I think that I'm looking at what he's looking for. So in that way, I'm like, all right, well, he had it to draw. But at the same time, I know, yo, you really like Lomachenko. And like I said, I'm not high yeah. on him. Remember when Teddy said Lomachenko was pound for pound number one, I was like, no, he not. You bugging out. Yeah. I, like, how, how, how you going to overlook all these people for Lomachenko? You going to yeah, yeah. overlook Terrence Crawford for... No, no, no. Yeah, right you're right. Now, you're right. The, the latest list that I posted, right? The latest list that I posted. I got Chocolatito ahead of Lomachenko when Lomachenko was still there. I had Chocolatito yeah. ahead of him. Why? He's a four division champion. He beat four world champions. Granted, yeah, he never yeah. unified, but you're not gonna tell me, you're not gonna tell me Lomachenko has a better resume than Roman Gonzalez. No way. No, no, yeah. no. Yeah, I get you. I personally would have had Lomachenko before the fight ahead. Cause uh I know I know your list is different and criteria. I just think when you get knocked out like that, and I don't think he's done enough recently compared to Lomachenko, but Lomachenko just lost, so I think as well uh, you could see an argument where you could remove Lomachenko. And, and 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 the reason I qualify Roman Gonzalez, right? Look, a lot of people saw last night's fight and they say, "Oh my God, vintage Chocolatito," yeah. because he beat Israel Gonzalez, right? Look, Israel Gonzalez already got beat by well, Jerwin. Was it Calia Fayo? All right, yo. No, Jerwin Ancaz beat him uh, in twenty eighteen. I think it was right. So yeah, 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 you're right. You're Israel, right. Israel is not how I came to that conclusion. If you could go in there with young, unbeaten Khalid Yafai, who's a longer guy than you are, and and he's more of a real super fly than you are, because we all know Roman is little for super fly. It, he went in there and dominated that man. He dominated him. That's how yeah. I know. If you could do that to an unbeaten champion, you are on the level. I can see a good argument now, top 10. If he beats Estrada, I think he's probably top three, somewhere, somewhere there. I think right now, I personally wouldn't have him top five. I think top 10 probably fair. But, I mean, it depends. So, pound for pound is different. It depends on the criteria. Like, I was just yeah, say, like, it's, it's, to me, it's all, about, it's all about show and prove. It's not about eye tests. It's not about how I think a fight is going to go. All of that is bullshit. Because if it was based on how a fight is going to go, Lomachenko would have still had his belts. But he don't, right? Me, neither me or you expected, even if you thought that Lopez was going to win, right? You didn't think that Loma going to go in there for the first half of the fight and not yeah, do no, shit. No one, you, no one called it like that. Like Anyone yeah. who picked Lopez, picked Lopez by knockout. Like, I think Steve Bunce made a good point. Uh, he said, after every fight, normally you have people saying, I, I saw that coming. But we, I, I, we were on a live. I think it was on Unbiased's live. This was one week ago. And we all talking about how Lopez could win. And I even said, Lopez's best win is to win by knockout. Hold on, hold, I hold even on, said, 
Hold on, hold on. John Gregg, is Crawford a Loma fanboy? I'm just curious. Like I said, we know what you don't like about that fighter. I don't know why you're trying to talk boxing when we know what you don't like about that fighter. Like, we know. The thing is, why do you bother people with that? Me and Ahmed is talking boxing, straight boxing, the, 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 the mechanics, the politics, what have you. All you want to talk about is pigment. That's the only thing you don't like about that dude. I don't care if you don't like him, dog. Like, you should start like that guy on it. Yeah, like, you should start a channel and make videos. And I tell this to everybody. If you got that many opinions, right, start doing your thing, start doing your thing, and see who gives a shit. But don't tell me, because I know what you don't like about him. And I don't care about that shit, because this is not that kind of channel. We don't give views over here yeah. peddling that bullshit. I don't do that. So go I got a glad. Yeah, I agree with I kind of glad that one of the fan base is gonna not be quiet because the Lomachenko fanboys were crazy as well, and they're still kind of crazy. John I don't Greg, you now think, look, hold on, hold on. John Greg, do you you honestly think I don't know who you are? <laughs> like you really think like you really gonna do the peekaboo hot? Like I know who you are, dog. But yo, yo, what's up, man? What's goody, rap? Yeah, man, all good, man. I'm just new on the game, just going through making my rounds. What do you think of that fight, bro? Which one, bro? The one what just happened on Showtime, man. He's talking about uh, Mateus oh, fight. Yeah, the Mateus I, you know fight. what? You know, I walked out and smoked a cigarette, bro. I literally walked out to smoke a cigarette, bro. Yeah, I missed it as well, man. I was, uh, oh. I was on a high. But I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, I think Subriel. Uh, he looked like he had the heavier hands of the two guys, man. He he looked like he was hurting uh, Hawkins, man. Yeah, he hurt him. He hurt him in the round, and uh, the I think the doctor had to come and stop it. I mean, not to be insensitive, right? But we know that Subriel can punch because of the Dada Chef fight, man. That's like how we know that dude is a real heavy-handed guy, man. Yeah. He lost his ass fight, though, didn't he? He came off a yeah, loss. He did. He, did. He, he got a hell. He got a hell. I think mentally he must have been... Like, a lot of guys do psychologically get affected. Someone's got, I think, a problem with the speakers. But... I remember Gavosnik as well. I don't think he was the same after the Adonis Stevenson. I don't fight. think he was the same after that fight either, bro. A lot of people have the same opinion. What's that, that noise, he... man? Someone's got. Some yeah, noise. I don't know what that noise is. Oh, he's got noise. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people feel that he started hesitating for fear of what I, I you know, and and we we don't know. We're not mind readers, but I saw a lot of people saying that they feel like Vosdick started hesitating to throw the right for fear of what it might do to the other guy. I don't rule it out because nobody wants to have that kind of stuff on their conscience. An yeah. athlete, they don't go out there like these dudes, most of them, it's a job, bro. They're not going out there to catch a body. They're just trying to get paid, feed their families, and they fighters. That's what they do. But they're not yeah, going I'm out just, there to put somebody in a hospital. I'm just basing it off what I know outside the ring because I, re I remember after the next fight, he fought, I believe there's a guy called, uh, it was an African guy, I forgot his name. He was a mandatory defense, and I think I forgot his name, but he wasn't a good, uh, good fighter, or whatever. Good, uh, you know, big name. But Andre Ward and those guys on ESPN, I think they do, you know, when they do the fighter meetings, I think someone asked Kavosdik about what happened in Stevenson. I think t someone, uh, two of them asked him, and I think he refused to answer. And like uh, they were saying, like the body language wasn't good. Like you could see, he did, like he was felt uncomfortable talking about it. And I think there was something obviously psychologically. He wasn't the same after that fight. And it's happened might, before. You know what? He might not have... You know what I mean? It ain't like yeah, he's... Nothing. It ain't like he's some young, brash fighter. He's a family guy. Yeah. It so happened I, before as well. Yeah, so I don't think he... I, I don't think he wanted something like that on his conscience. That That's... Yeah. And, and uh, what I'm saying after that. Yeah, Stevenson was really in a bad situation for a while. I think he was... Uh, in a coma for a while. So, yeah, and this happened before. I don't think Nigel Ben and Chris Eubank were the same after their fights with uh, Michael Watson and Gerald McClellan. Like, so uh, the fact that he's retired as well, that does say a lot. But I, I don't know what were you talking about before. You were talking about something else. Was it? No, I want to get the. I want to get the Jay. Uh, I want to get to some of these uh, Lomachenko comments. Jay Mundo said, "I think Loma has been a bit overrated, perhaps due to his pigment. However, he is skilled. Just no way better what than the? Mikey." All right, now this is what I'm going to say, Jay Mundo, right? Once again, you making it about pigment. I know why they decided to put him as high as they did. 
Now, some people don't want to accept that. You know, understand? Like some people don't want to accept that. If you want to talk about people that are overrated, yeah, I think Vasil Lomachenko was overrated a bit, a bit, not a lot, but a bit. Yeah, I, I never had him as number one. You could look at every list I've ever posted, and he's never been number one, never. But Julius, can I say something? What? Can Can we say everyone could be overrated to a degree? It depends. Who yeah, you ask. I, I mean that's what I'm trying to allude to. That like, yo, if you so mad over who they rate at number one, then why the hell are you following them? Like, someone said Lomachenko's overrated. I think it was below Michael Martino video. And I replied to the guy. He said, by your logic, then Floyd Mayweather is overrated. I wasn't comparing Mayweather to Lomachenko. No, but it's not I was even trying... if Ring Magazine yeah. tomorrow, if Ring Magazine tomorrow rates a fighter that you like, you're going to be like, yeah, Ring know what they're doing. Then the second the second that they rate somebody else, you're going to start crying about that. I'm like, why are you even going by Ring Magazine? If yeah. you have a different criteria than Ring Magazine, why don't you stop being lazy and make a list? Because hmm. that's what I did. For I, I told you, I've been a boxing fan most of my life. But I never went by pound-for-pound list by, from anyone until recent years. Because I always thought, this list is stupid. The list is yeah, stupid. Yeah, I don't like that list. But I looked at Transnational. They got Tyson Fury in there. And no knock on Tyson Fury as a fighter. But you... I don't think you should rate heavyweights that high. Like, he's I don't got think a couple you of good rate weight. heavyweight. I mean, I don't think you should. To me, it's like that shows that the average boxing fan is just an emotional idiot because there's no point in making a pound for pound list if you're going to have it filled full of career heavyweights. Now, if you got Usyk on there, the reason I understand is because Usyk is not a career heavyweight, he is a cruiserweight that moved up. So yeah. I get it. Like, if you're good enough, if your skills, because you clearly not a heavyweight, not by today's standards, but if you got enough skill that you could go up there and fight, yeah, you should be on the list. But if you're going to have career heavyweights on there, all right, now you just def that just defeats the purpose. How, how was Mike Tyson pound for pound number one then on ring? Because I'm they, not seeing it. Because I'm just they asking decided, this question. bro, because they decided that he should be. That's why. Because he was popular. Like, you oh. ask, so if you ask that, that's a retort. Why do you think they did that? Because he was popular. They no, wasn't I thought he had a good resume. Well. Like, I thought he, he did have a good why, resume. Why did two years ago they put Errol Spence Jr. on there? They told you why. Because they think so. Because I test. They even said that his resume, it ain't nothing special on it. They said that. I didn't, I didn't make them write that. They wrote that. Bro, I, was just talking, I was just talking generally about Ty Tyson was 38 or something in all. And he had, you had a good resume. Look, he's undisputed heavyweight champion. I'm just saying, at that time, was he valid to rank the guy top 10 or not? Because he did no, have a pretty good look, resume. If you're asking me by my train of thought, no, you don't rank a heavyweight. Unless he like Klitschko and he just, just does some ridiculous... Because to me, Klitschko's reign, right? Which is underrated. But it's unprecedented. I'm telling you, when Corey Saunders beat this man's ass, you never would have thought that he was going to go on from that to reign for nine years. You never thought that. That kind of reign, you got to kind of think about it. They're like, damn, that's something else. But that's not what's going on right now, right? That's not what's going on. And that would be an ex that, that really would be an exception. That really would I agree, be. I agree. I agree. The pound for pound list is for smaller fighters. If you don't want to abide by that, because you like somebody a whole lot, because most of the time, that's what it is. It's that you really like Tyson Fury, and you want him to get a ring. That's all it is. Yeah, but what about Mike Tyson? I, I'm just playing devil, devil's advocate. I, I want to say this. Uh, Tyson was small, as a small heavyweight. The guy was 5'10 or 11. That's he was fighting bro, guys who were much was, bigger. What, and, and this is what I, I find hard to understand. If I tell you that a heavyweight's superiority is already implied by a real life setting, right? That if you put a middleweight, if you put the most skilled middleweight in the world in there with him, in all likelihood, Mike is gonna floor him, even though he might not be as skilled as that middleweight. He might still floor him because of his size. Because unlike, un, 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 you know, contrary to popular opinion, yeah, size matters in boxing. Don't let nobody tell you different, size matters. The weight behind the punches matters. It's not mm. complicated. This is not this uh, is not a video uh, game. If a dude got a fifty pound weight advantage on you, you think you you think he not gonna walk through your punches? 
Yeah, I was just saying, if you got a guy that's like, say, 200 and I don't know, 10 pounds, he's 5, 10, 11, he's knocking out guys who are 250, 260. I don't know, as a heavyweight, does that, I think that doesn't matter to a degree, but I don't know, pound for pound, I, think, I basically don't I think, think heavyweight should be ranked. You know why I think that, you know why I think that that's a lot of head splitting? Because the list is not for small, of, I mean, the list is not for the heavyweight. It's not for yeah, him. I agree, I agree. It's, simple. it's like, to me, it's simple. It's like if yeah. I give you a coloring book and tell you color in the lines and you don't want to color in the All right, that's you then, bro, because you it defeats the purpose of what you're doing if you're just going to do whatever you want. What about Ali? Would you put him, say, if you were... No! No, I'm saying top 10. <laughs> no! I, I, I agree. I agree. Because I don't really agree. Understand. Do you understand, right? And, does, and this isn't necessarily you, Ahmed, but I'm saying the heavyweight is already the man. You don't need to rank him. He's yeah, already the man. I'm saying there's only anomaly, like the odd few guys I'd rate. Uh, a Klitschko, because what he did, the longevity. I'd personally my all-time top 10. I'd, I'd probably put Ali in there, but that's the only heavyweight. But that's just the odd few. I mean, odd, I mean, heavy, the odd, odd heavyweight. Heavy. For them cats, for them cats. Now this this goes back to personal preference because at the end of the day, it's people that rank heavyweights. If you rank heavyweights and you go by that, okay, then go go off a list that ranks heavyweights. I'm just telling you that I don't. Yeah, because yeah. I agree with that. It's a, to me, it's redundant. The heavyweight will already beat that smaller fighter. That's not what this list is for. The list is. If they were all the same size, based on skill, because we taking the size away. If we say this, we take away the size. If they was all the same size, who would win? Because this is about skill, not size. Yeah. So if, I, if, I'm just saying, if you if you include resume and a guy a heavy car, very very good exceptional resume, I can see that being one of the reasons. But I agree with you. The list is not designed for heavy. I've said that before because I was gonna put Joshua on my list after he beat Parker, but then I thought about it. It's not really designed for heavyweight, so I don't think I should I'm be putting like, that. Look, I'm, 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 like, I will say, I'm an Anthony Joshua fan. Like, I'm a fan of that fighter. Do you see him on my list? No. No, yeah. Because that would be stupid. Yeah, that's, I that's, agree. That's, that's some goofball shit. Like, all right, so you just want to, you just really like guys, and you want to rank them. That, that's what it is. You just really like them, and you want to, like, all right then, bro. Just keep that shit to yourself. And do not come up to me arguing about why this and no, bro. You rank heavyweights. You can't even color in the fucking lines, bro. That's how I look at it. You are so dumb that you cannot color in the lines. I don't need to talk to you. Please don't talk to me. Let me ask you a question. One question before I let. And I was just gonna say, do you think uh, when Golovkin was pound for pound number one by Ring Magazine, do you think Klitschko? Should have been ranked ahead of him because the only you know, argument can never moved first up. Off, first off, that argument only comes in if you had Gennady at number one. What's the problem with that? I never had him at number one, ever, yeah. ever. And the only reason that argument comes into it is because I know Gennady never moved up in weight. He was only a champion in one weight class the same as Vladimir, but that doesn't change the landscape and the rules of the list. You're not trying to find out who fought in one weight class. You're trying to find out if Gennady was the same size as Vladimir, is Gennady more skilled than Vladimir? Because we've taken the size out of it if we're making it the same size. That's the order of the day. Because Doug Fisher said the reason they ranked Golovkin one because he made 20 defensive. I know he made defenses of the super belt, to, not super, I mean, what was the interim belt. To my knowledge, I think Klitschko had way more defenses of the WBO Klitschko, belt. Klitschko had defenses of the full title, yeah, right? Yeah. Whereas for Gennady, that's what for Gennady, they included defenses of a baby belt. Yeah, that, interim for, belt. For him, to, for him to be in that conversation, they de- included the defenses of a belt that they don't recognize when Rocky Fielding got it. They don't recognize it when Murata got it. They don't recognize it when fucking Omar Figueroa. Is, it's a baby belt. Do you run around? Like, yeah. they, 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 in other words, they didn't. They normally don't give fighters that hold lesser titles that shine. To my oh yeah, he got all these defenses. No, y'all cut corners with Golovkin because y'all was pushing him. Y'all cut corners with him because y'all was pushing him. 
And I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, we don't talk about no, yeah, he defended the regular belt. He's here to defend yeah. the regular belt. No, we don't be talking yeah, about that. Vlad's defenses was defenses of the full titles. The full titles. Yeah, yo, Julius, I got to jump out. I just wanted to ask you the last question. How many Mayweather pay-per-views did you order? You know, once he signed the deal with Showtime, did you order the Madonna pay-per-views? I'm going to say that those were different times, Ahmed. See, no, now... I'm just asking old... curiosity. Wait, bro. Like, stop talking over me. I'm trying to answer your question. In those days, whenever Mayweather fought, we threw parties, so we'd all chip in. Now that I'm older and I'm, you know, a family guy, now I buy more pay-per-views by myself, whereas before, we would all chip in to buy the pay-per-view, and we'd make a party out of it. But I will say uh -huh. that every pay-per-view, and I, and this is every pay-per-view, every it, it really started for me with the um De La Hoya fight because I hated Oscar De La Hoya. So I had to I had to see that fight. That was the first time that I put money down for a Mayweather pay-per-view. And every pay-per-view thereafter, I put money down. If I didn't put money down, I brought liquor. But I was always there. All right, all right. I was just wondering because uh, obviously we didn't have the De La Hoya fight on pay-per-view in the UK. But when he signed the Showtime deal, a lot of those fights were on Box Nation. The only one that was pay per view, I think, it was Pacquiao, which I did obviously order. But I was—I I don't think that Maidana pay per view was that bad. I thought that was a good fight. But a lot of those fights, uh, what was it like Berto, Guerrero? Bro, I don't know if it's 80, 70, 80 dollars. That was a lot of money. See, that's that's um, what the older I get, like yeah. the the less I argue about certain things because after the first mate one, the fight was great. If you was watching that fight, then when it was live. And you seen Marcos was was really there to to scrap and all of that, bro. We was on the edge of our seat with that pay per view. Yeah. And when the second one ahead of the second one, because of how the first fight was, yes, there was excitement because we thought, yo, Chino, Chino wasn't fucking around. Like he he really he beat Broner and he in here with Floyd and he giving Floyd some work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this this this, this good shit. I don't want like that's why it's certain people I'm not going to talk to their ass like yeah. especially when it come. Just like, look, when it comes to Loma, I could probably only talk to people like Mark about Loma because I know Mark Mark wasn't on Loma's dick. Mark is just a boxing fan. I'm just a boxing fan. I don't hate him. I don't love him. He's just a good fighter. That's the so same, yeah. Mark, Mark, but, and, and with Floyd, it's the same shit. Like, bro, I can't talk to Floyd. I can't talk about Floyd with everybody because people going to lie. Mm -hmm. Like, like I give people, oh, Floyd this, Floyd that. Floyd Unified, bro. If we're going to keep doing this Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather bullshit in 2020, you know Floyd Unified and Manny didn't? Why yeah, you tell me right. how much of a coward he is? And Floyd Unified, bro. Manny didn't. Yeah, uh, do, I hate Manny? Do, do I hate Manny? No. no. Do I hate Floyd? No. It's boxing. Yeah, that Canelo card was good. You had Danny Garcia and Matisse on the undercard. I was just asking because I remember those days Pacquiao and Mayweather were both fighting and they're both doing pay-per-views. And Pacquiao had a lot of pay-per-view fights, which I don't think were probably pay-per-view worthy as well. There's a couple of Mayweather's ones as well, especially on Showtime. I remember like Pacquiao Al GD, Pacquiao Rios. Uh, I don't know if, uh, like, I was just wondering, because in America, it was different. Over here, it wasn't on pay-per-view. So I was just wondering if people were shelling out a lot of money because... My man's in them, look, my man's in them was, uh, uh, his dad, his dad used to order all the Pacquiao fights. Now, I'm not a, I don't hate Pacquiao. So I don't, I'm not saying this to say that I hate Yeah. His dad was a big Pacquiao fan. So he would always order the Pacquiao fights. I never really put money down for Pacquiao like that. But what he would tell us is, yo, if you want to come to watch the fight, you ain't got to pay for the fight, but bring some beer. <laughs> bro. Bring beer. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. I, I had, I opened the Pacquiao De La Hoya and Pacquiao Me the fights. But yeah, we were lucky that time. A lot of those fights were on Box Nation, so. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Uh, I'll, I'll be right back. Mark, hold it down for me. Sure. What's up, Hamid? Hello? Okay. Yeah, what's going on to everybody in the chat? How are you guys doing? Let's see. Let's see. Let me have a look at here. Ooh. Lance says, I agree, though. The pound-for-pound -pound list is to acknowledge the skill sets and abilities in the lower weight divisions. 
Is it? Sorry, could you hear me, Doc? I can hear you now. What's happening, Hamid? All How right, are you doing? Sorry. I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. I'll just see. Is the second fight on? Or on the show time? Um, I'm not looking at it right now. I'm not, I'm not looking at it right now, right. so I can't tell. It. I'll tell you now. Hold on. Give me a sec. Because we had the was the Matisse fight, and then we got, I think, is Evgeny Martinez. I'll probably just check the main event. Yeah. I was just wondering. That was a that was a damn good that was, yo Matias really performed well against Malik. I thought Malik was going to get the win on points. How, how did he win? Was there a knockout decision? Uh, re- referee stoppage. Uh, not referee stoppage. Uh, doctor stoppage in the corner pulled him out. All right. Yeah, I heard it was a good fight. The, I love the guys. Who he beat the it. living. The first few rounds was really tight, but then Matias started to take over and just dominate him. Man, honest to God, he just started to pulverize him. It's crazy. Yeah. I was going to say the clocks went back because uh, I was on a hangout. So I didn't know what time it was starting. But I managed Martinez to is the card. in the ring right now. Martinez is oh, yeah. I managed to cut the card yesterday. I thought that was really good. A shame it wasn't on in the UK. But I like the last two, the main two fights, which I got to watch. They well, the Chocolatito, the Chocolatito Israel fight was really good. And I was yeah. like, right. That's going to be the best fight on the card. And then that Quadras Estrada card, if it wasn't for like, if it wasn't for the Zepeda Bernanchik fight, that would be the fight of the year right now. Yeah, that was a candidate. Uh, I, I had that fight close. I think I had Estrada 6 4 going into the 11th. And then he closed yeah. the show. But Quadras came back strong towards the end. I thought he's going to go, you know, maybe to the decision. But that was a really good fight. I enjoyed it. And the Gonzalez fight was good as well. That, I thought, was a very good performance from Chocolate Tito. I think Israel Gonzalez did do well, but just the volume. The guy is throwing over a thousand punches. That's going to be a really <laughs> good fight. Oh, that's going to be a great fight, especially since Estrada's shown that he's a little bit more, like, uh, yeah, in this fight, like, he's shown that he's a little bit more defensively flawed than recent than a few years ago. Like, he's shown, like, a he's slower... Tough, yeah. yeah, he's more open. He's more open, but He's also got better balance now when he sets his feet. His balance is better than it used to be. So he slowly changed his style a bit. Interesting to see because he's normally fleet of foot. Yeah, that's going to be good for this. The thing is, uh, when they fought in 2012, Estrada was only, I think, 23 or 22. He might not have peaked then. Uh, he might have, he might have. But right now, I think he's more closer to his prime, I'd say. I still think Gonzalez is a handful. I think only... A couple of fighters probably get the better of him, but he has beaten him before, so you never know. And I think he will be a lot more competitive than I thought. Uh, after the Israel Gonzalez fight, I thought Estrada will be a big favorite, but uh, I think that's a closer fight than initially. A lot the winner of that fight goes to pound for pound number two on my list, man. Yeah, the winner of that definitely be, I think, top three, top five, somewhere between there. I'd put, put, I because I have. You could uh, put him higher. I have them quite high already. Yeah, yeah. About inside the top ten. They're about in there. If it's Strada wins, I'd probably have him top three because I think he, he's already beaten Rungvi Sai and mm-hmm. just beat Quadras. And he lost to Rungvi Sai in a close fight. I think I had Rungvi Sai winning the first fight, seven five. So, yeah. Gonzalez wins yeah. as well. But then again, the Gonzalez overall, he's got a very good resume. I'll have to think about that. But yeah, that's He's got the best resume of the three overall. Yeah, yeah overall. overall, yeah. But then again, Estrada's resume is sick when you look at guys like Giovanni Segura and everything he was beaten, you know? So Yeah, and if he beats Gonzalez, he'll have avenged oh. two of his losses. I think all three, actually, sorry, of his losses. Did he avenge the third, the other dude? Did he avenge yeah, the other Yeah, he dude? said on commentary last night he avenged it with a first-round knockout. I didn't know about that. The guy okay, not really... much. I think that the winner sense. of that could fight Rungvisai. Although I, I'd rather see Rungvisai maybe fight someone else for the time being. I'd rather see the winner of that crap. Honest to God, like his Rada Chocolatito fight the winner of Ioka Tanaka. Yeah, yeah, that would be a good fight. I don't know what Rungvisai is going to do for the time being. He just beat, what was it? I can't pronounce his name. Rungrang, but I don't know if he's going to sit on the shelf for now. Because we got we got to wait for this fight. This is he's the mandatory for the WBC. Yeah. So who's got the WBO? Is that no, correct? He, 
Tanaka is mandatory with the WBO. Oh, Tanaka, uh, oh I thought Tanaka was because he's the super champ. He was the super champion at one twelve. You know. Yeah. The way I, do, do I that. think Roman Gonzalez is really a natural one twelve. I don't. I don't think he's. He doesn't look that uh, big, but that shows how good he is. Like a one fifteen, the amount of size he's given away, the amount of punches it's he's thrown. It's a frame, man. It's yeah, like. His height, no, but like his frame, yes, you get what I mean. Like, he's really filled his frame out. If you looked at him yesterday with Israel, Israel was a lot taller, but Israel's one of the tallest super flies out there. And then Roman himself, he looked very wide, he looked a lot wider than Israel, you know. Yeah, as he's gone older, he's put on a weight. Like, I, don't, I don't think he could probably cut it off as much as he could, but like, he was giving away a lot of size to Rungi side. Those first two fights, uh, it'll be interesting to see though how Estrada as well does because that first fight was a really good fight. But we'll see who makes the better adjustments. But that's a really that's a really good fight. I'm looking forward to that. Um, what is that? One fifteen. That'll be a good unification to have. Man, uh, all I those fights are one. Look, you can make tons of fights. Danny Nietzsche has come back as well. He's going to be fighting. I think it's four months from now. They haven't officially announced it, but that's what I'm... No, wait, sorry. MTK are saying he's fighting in December or January because they just signed Danny Nietzsche. So he's with MTK yeah. now. So he's coming back into the fray. You've got Yang Anka has with a belt. He needs to fight someone. Hopefully, yeah. Japanese New Year, Ryoka Tanaka. It looks like Estrada versus Chocolatito will be February next year. I mean... That division's fire. You can make tons of fights. Quadra still showed he has enough left Quadra to be. Quadra and Rungvisa. That'd be a good fight, I think. A rematch. That's a good fight. Yeah. I'll, I'll watch the crap out of that, yeah. especially yeah. after how he performed and how Rungvisa didn't look great against Amna, but that was at the like, Super Bantam. So, I mean... It's all 120, yeah. And Quadra's yeah. beat him as well. I know it was a bit controversial. I think it was, uh, what was it? a technical decision because of a head clash, but... Still, Quadras got a win over Rungvisa. I think Sergio Moro said they've all beaten each other. and Yeah, that's that's a good point as well. So I, I'd watch that. I call I them the be... mini four kings, man. I call them yeah. the mini four kings. Yeah, it's a good weight class. I, I wanted to kind of see Rungvisa in a new fight, but I, I don't think we'll ever see that fight now. No, we'll never see that. And Rungvisa ain't really cut out to go off the bantam now. Like, it's really a shame what happens like, with Chocolatito losing to Rungvisa in that first fight because that's the reason. We never got yeah. a new way versus Roman Gonzalez. That's the reason. I think a new but, wrong visa might have been more competitive than a new Roman Gonzalez. I don't I think you know that, was too big. You know that Nair is talking about if he wins against Ubali, he wants to either go to one thirty or one fifteen to become a five weight world champion. And he said Whoa. that he'd really like to go to one fifteen and fight Chocolatito. If that I know some people are against that, but I'd love to see those two legends fight. I think that might be a step too far, but I don't know if he could do it. Then, like, I thought 118 was a step. Well, too according far. to himself, at 118, right? When he fought in New Way, before he went onto the scales, he was drinking water because he was 116 pounds. This is according to himself, and he had to drink water to get to 117 and a half pounds. Yeah. So he yeah. he over he overcooked. So what the Nair is pretty much telling us is he thinks he can actually make 115. Well, that'd be interesting. I, I think he, 126 for him was way too much. I thought he was more of a natural 122 to 118, somewhere between there. I was surprised he cut down to 118 at that age, but it depends how he looks against Ubali because I know he did put on a good fight with the Nui, but that was a very physical, like a tough fight. But we'll see. That's a good fight. I like the Ubali Tunir fight. After that, I think... Ubali's a good that. stylistic matchup because he's good on the back foot and he's got quick hands, you know? So Ubali yeah. can... Re so he'll be more... Because it's not like a new way he's going to trade with you. Like, we'll box, but mostly we'll trade with you. Uh, Ubali's not going to sit there in the pocket with Denaire for anything longer than three, four seconds. He's not going to. He's not done. Yeah. He, he knows... Like, if you look at how Takuma was able to catch and hurt Ubali and even, like... When Rashid Warren landed clean on, on Ubali, he gave him some yeah, trouble. I, I mean, yeah, so Ubali doesn't have the greatest of chance. Good move, a good boxer. But, but I, I feel as though, like, if the Nair got on top of him, it might be game over, man. I, really well, I, wanted, to, I wanted to continue. I wanted to continue on, um because this seems to be a really hot topic right now. What's up? Uh, this, this pound for pound shit. And it's like, I feel like what people need to understand about pound for pound is it's a lot more simple 
than people make it out to be. Pound for pound is basically saying that 118 pounds of Inui is better than 220 pounds of Derek Chisora. That's basically what it is. That if, yeah, in real life, Derek Chisora would probably kill Naoya Inui. <laughs> but it's not because he's a better boxer. It's just because he's a naturally bigger man. Yeah, yeah. And what about resume, that, though? Res where do you put resume? Because that's where I think resume, people... resume comes into pound for pound because the only way you know that a fighter is a good fighter is because of who he fought. That's where resume comes in. Right, it's not about, like, like, what happened? This is what I'm trying to say. That's why I see people ranking heavyweights. That's the only reason. I can't think of any other reason why you'd put a heavyweight. It's because of the guys they beat. But then again, I do agree with what you're saying. It's not designed for heavyweights. It's not for them because you know that the heavyweight is a would probably beat everyone on the list with sheer size alone. Like yeah. he'd beat unless them. they were the same size. Yeah, which is why you got to yeah. make them the same size to take away the advantage. So, so if you if you took Anthony Joshua with all of his skills and attributes, right? And you, this is actually funny to think of. And you made him a five foot four version of himself, right? With like. A sixty-six inch reach. He gets killed. And you put yeah. and you put him into the ring with Estrada. With his killed. movement and the way he boxes, does he beat Estrada? No. No. no way and you know, and, and that's thank you, Mark. But this is the thing, Mark. And I'm not being I'm not, you know, being nice for I'm being honest. A lot of people are not as smart as Mark. Because it's yeah. it's like yo, like it's like you gotta be a genius to understand this shit. Like, yo, dog, it's not complicated. The average heavyweight does not exhibit the skills that the smaller fighters do because their bodies are built different. They're not, they don't, they don't have to do that stuff. You know, they're bigger men. They don't rely on speed and reflexes as much as the smaller fighters. You can look at the punch stats and see they don't even throw as many punches as the smaller fighters. It's different. So the idea is that, you know, uh, 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 147 pounds of Terrence Crawford is a more skilled boxer than 220 pounds of Carlos to come. Yeah, and another thing is, uh, I agree. I, the only thing I'll say, Julius, about your list is some things I picked up that I thought that I never really thought of before, like fighters coming off losses and I think quality of competition and stuff like that. Uh, I'll say this. I remember when Guillermo Rigondo beat uh, Doné. I had him high on my list, and I think Ring Magazine had it as well because it wasn't just about just beating Doné and his words, like... I think it was 10th or 11th fight. Like, he didn't have that many fights. I can't remember how many he had, but the skill he showed, I thought for a guy like who's about five foot five, I could see him beating anyone if they're like pound for pound, if they, he was to match up with anyone. Obviously, I think I had Mayweather, Ward, and a couple of other guys ahead. But at that time, that's what I used to base my pound for pound list on as well. Like, right now, I, I don't really argue one way or the other, but I do keep a track. Like, I don't like the reason, racket the reason I don't like uh the reason I don't rate fighters who are coming right off of a loss is I don't know if that's the beginning of a downward spiral. What I do know is the reason you even got ranked is because you were winning. So losing, that's not gonna cut it. Yeah. The list is supposed to be hard to get on and easy to fall off of. Why? Because it's a very exclusive list. It's not supposed to be easy to stay there. You got to be the motherfucking best just to get considered. You got to be the best. That's how that, that's anything in life. If, if, if it's if it's if it's an exclusive list, it's for a reason. So if you lose, just bounce back. If you bounce back, your resume didn't lose nothing. Right. Your resume. You still fought a lot of good fighters. Like if Nonito beats Ubali, you better fucking believe with the resume that he got. He getting a ring. That man resume is, is like, bro. So, who, yeah, who did you have one after? If he beats Ubali real quick, he'll be a three toy bad boy champion. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. It's like, yo, dog, that's that's where resume comes into it. That these are your skills over time. You picked up skills like Canelo, for example, lost to Floyd Mayweather Jr., right? But he's picking up skills as he goes along. He's he's a more skilled fighter over time. If his body lets him down, yeah, we're going to consider that. But overall, you get better over time. And that's why it's a career long list. Because you ain't the fighter at, if you are, then you fucked up. You ain't the fighter at 1-0 at and 0 that you will be at 20-0 and 0 or 40-0. So, yeah, you got to factor that. It's a lot of little things, but it's not complex. It's about skill. 
And the only way you know that a fighter is skilled, the only real way to know is who he fights and who he beats, not who he loses to, who he beats. That that's why I think it's odd to have someone like Tyson Fury on your list. Like the guy's six foot nine, ten. As a pound for pound, <laughs> you can't really have like it's odd, man. Don't get me wrong, he has got some very good wins, but pound for pound, uh, I don't know. Well, that's I think stretching. You got to factor it. AJ size. has right. never been on my list country he's never been on my list and every single list that i've ever posted is on instagram you will not find he's never been on your list never spence spence Spence. Spence. yo i keep getting shit because i don't even have spence in my top 15 he's number 16 on mine spence's spence made a brief appearance he was there for after the mikey fight i had no choice i didn't want to put him there but he was there it's just he was there at number 10 why beating mikey don't mean shit I don't know why people had him after the Brook fight. That I found odd, like <laughs> just for beating Brook. That was just a lot of that, and, and, and that's what I'm saying. Is Sean Porter? No, no, I ain't gonna station with Porter because I, I forgot that Brook was unbeaten. But what I'm gonna say is, I he beat. I, I don't even want to get into that because I'm so tired of talking about that. Like Spencer is like Golovkin. Is like putting Golovkin on your list for beating Brook. I know <laughs> yeah, some people. Like, are... Spencer's overrated, bro. <laughs> I think I, I I can say a lot of reasons why I think that he's getting so much like like they just like the dude. I think they just like him as a human being or some shit. Cause I'm like, bro, like who oh, Errol? Yeah, like it gotta be something like oh, that. Oh no no no, it's it's simple. And um, most most of the panel with Ring Magazine are American, American. Yeah. and you do need and. Hamid, you listen to Montero show. You heard yeah. me talk about this to him before, I'm sure, about uh, the American... I think there's a bit of an American bias in the media over in America, obviously. And to sell issues in America, they can't just have one American on that pound for pound list. They need to put another one there. Yeah, but then... We know at the end of the day, right, nobody here is a moron. We know what game they're playing, and we also know that in many ways the pound for pound list in popular periodicals is used as a marketing tool. That's that's kind of how to use it as a marketing tool. But if we're gonna just use it for what it's for, to rate the skills of the fighters based on their resume, you know, because that's the only way you're gonna know. Mm-hmm. If we use it for that, how you not gonna have Kazuto on there? Just how like how, bro? I've, I've look, I, I, how? Look, when, I I don't know. I have no idea. The dude's a four-weight world champion. I mean, if you're a four-weight world champion, you've been a unified champion, you've made nine title defenses, and I think he's beaten four champions. Yeah. No, no, no. He beat uh, on my... Three. I believe it's two. I believe it's two to three, not four. Mm. What about... It, it, can't, it can't be two. It's more than two. I'll 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 look at I'll look at the wrap up I did on it because it's on Instagram. I always do a wrap up before I rank them. That way, if, mm. if my old ass forgets, all I gotta do is go to the wrap up. I was gonna say, what is Spence beats Pacquiao? Do you think t- top five to ten is a uh, with your ranking? Five, no, top. All right, let's let's look at brass tacks. If he beats Pacquiao, how many champions has he beaten? All right, I get active. you. Right, right, like active, Spring. like that would be three. How many belts is he in possession of? Three. Three. Who else? Yeah. Who else out there has that going on? That they did that. You know what I mean? Because it's a, I could, it's a couple of guys that got that going on. Usyk, you know, you know, uh, I was Usyk won the all the belts. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Will the Ring Magazine be on the line if uh, the Ring spent? Uh, uh, no, no, it wouldn't because, uh, uh, to my knowledge, Pacquiao's not one or two on any of the um. Any oh, of the yeah, individual it's ranks. Crawford, didn't it? Yeah, it's it's between Crawford and Spence. They they switch them up every so often, but it's it's between Crawford and Spence. Yeah, yeah that's all right. That's a good point. Yeah, he beat three Julius. He beat three champions: Yamanaka, uh, Raveco, and uh, the dude that he beat for his fourth title at minimum weight. What was his name? Uh, Jagger Jang or something? Kitty Pong Jagger Jang or something? Oh, Kitty Pong Jang Jang. Yeah, yeah, that that, that name always. <laughs> Like Kitty Pong. Pong, Kitty Pong, Kitty Pong, Joy Jagger. Uh, it's like Arnold the Jagger, 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 Jagger and David Pong, Pong, Remember Pong that? Been the block, Shout out to Kitty Pong, Jang Jung. That motherfucker's name pops up all, all, all over the resumes, bro. Down there, that motherfucker's <laughs> been all over the place. The, that dude's that dude's a little. He's crazy, bro. Because when like he was unbeaten as well when he Yoka beat. Yoke is a bad motherfucker, but you never know it based on the American journalist. Kitty Pong, Kitty Pong's record right now. I just looked at it. It's sixty nine wins, two losses, one draw. 
Bro! Okay. <laughs> That's a good record, yeah. This is, my point. this is where the journalists in boxing do the sport a disservice because if you ask the average boxing fan that thinks they know boxing, they think they like, because they watch it, right? They don't have the foggiest fucking idea who Kitty Pong is. The foggiest. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I stopped paying yeah. attention to Ring when they had Golovkin won. I thought they were being, they were doing yeah, a disservice. Bro, like, now you That's when I lost. And for who, bro? Daniel Gill? Like, who, bro? Martin Murray? Gabe Rosado? Ishida? Yo. Yo, hold on. Put some respect on Martin Murray's name, man. That dude's that dude's about to fight against Billy Joe Saunders. <laughs> I I love that fight, man. I think it's great. Just like I love Dusty Hernandez versus uh, Demetrius Dandre. I'm Danny Jacobs I'm surprised versus not people. <laughs> Plans should, be to top five. Plans should be top five for what reason? I'm going to shoot you a link so you can come on here and tell me. What if he beats Crawford? Would you say top uh, I would say out. I would say that yeah, yeah. no, nah, I mean you gotta, but that's realistic shit. If he beats Crawford, why, why, you'd, you'd, why would huh? you give him more credit for? You would give him more credit for beating Crawford than Pacquiao, but you got Pacquiao one. I, I don't know. No, you're not like I did. Like, bro, like you got to stop interrupting me first. The second thing oh, is, yeah. if he beats Crawford, he becomes lineal. That's one. He gets the oh, Ring yeah. Magazine. That's two. He beat three world champions. That's three. He's in possession Julius. of three titles. That's four. Julius. Crawford's so, not linear. I didn't say no, no, no. He never said that. He said he would be linear. linear because Crawford and him are number one and number two in the division, so they would establish a new lineage. I was just talking about cyber, does, cyber, does Cyberzone also have Crawford ranked number two? I don't go by Cyberzone. I go by the Fab Four. Ring Magazine, no, Transnational, yeah, Box Rec. ESPN. I don't. I never. I don't think box I don't, never it's Cyberzone, but it's Cyberzone who recognizes lineal. So does I Transnational. The Transnational aren't the ones who. Uh, so, the way it works is you have to get it. You have to be rank one and two on th on these three. It's Cyberzone, Ring Magazine, and TBRB. It's been that way for forty years nearly. When Tracy Callis first took over the full lines of lineal, he's the one who does it on Cyberzone. Well, I don't know. If I'm being honest, all my thousand years as a boxing fan, I never frequented Zyberzone. No, no, I know that there's some, uh, like I, I'm being not like I don't. I'm not familiar with that. They're they're the, the they're the historian. They're the historians. They're the historians. I know the transnational, even though it came out fairly recent compared to some <clears throat> other periodicals. Uh, I think some mm -hmm. of the guys that do the voting on that also do the voting for the, the Hall of Fame. Some of them are popular yeah. journalists. So I mean, I, I, I know I'll, some I'll, of them. I'll, some of them do have voting cards. T uh, three people on the actual full committee of the people who give out the Hall of Fame are on Cyberzone. So they're the actual committee. They're three of six. They're half where, the committee. Where do they? Where do they rank Crawford and Spence in the welterweight division? I I haven't looked. Uh, they don't actually put their list up normally until like. Uh, I, I think they do an annual. So oh, I don't think they've done that. Then they're not. Then I can't go by that An annual list. Like, bro, it's a lot of shit happening in the year. Like, yeah, why is Boxrec credible when they got Wilder pound for pound number five? Like, Boxrec fucked know, up right? their own algorithm about. <laughs> they they did though. You know they did. They fucked up their own algorithm about four or five months ago during the shutdown. I don't know what the hell happened, but they fucked up their own algorithm. Yeah, it's messed up. Their rankings, the pound for pound rankings, have always been a joke. But I, I don't know. They use some points score like that's what I can't take them that credit, like seriously. I think it's Ring Transnational, and I think it's ESPN. I don't. I'm not sure the other one. I don't go by um Box Rex pound for pound. I think it's a uh, shot to shit. But their divisional rank standings are usually pretty good. Usually, I mean, oh, yeah. I. I Usually, and that's that's what we're talking about. We're talking about divisional rank standings, where the best, the ten best, or the fifteen best, or the fifty best, or whatever. Yeah, you're right, you're right. And usually, the desk, usually they get it right. Usually, uh, but right, we should right. just, just we should just go it. by the we should just use the YouTube pound for pound list coming soon. Man, shit. And and uh, like I said, I don't know why pound for pound is such yes. a subject. When it's not contentious, bro. 
The only way your eye test matters, right, is if you are Angelo fucking Dundee and have returned from the grave. Because that's the only way I'm going to listen to your eyes over mine. That's the only way. You, Eddie Futch, and Cuss, y'all walk out of the grave, and then y'all tell me what y'all think about somebody based on how they look. That's the only way I'm going to listen. And even then, no, I'm I'll listen to certain dudes. I'll listen to certain, like, certain trainers even now, like... If James Ali Bashir wanted to tell me about what he sees on his eye test, you damn well better believe I'm going to listen to him. I'm going to listen, but I'm not going to treat it as gospel. I'm going to listen. Yeah, I get, I, that's why I like the heavy division. Like, it's none of... Um, don't get me wrong. You know, obviously, some people prefer the lower weights, but that's why I really like the heavy division. Like, it's just, you know... It's not really about pound for pound and all that. It's just about the baddest man on the planet, or whatever the richest prize in boxing is. The, or in sports, sorry, that's what we. I like you watching. know why I like the lighter weights because of fucking Gallo Estrada. All right, that <laughs> shit was so much fucking fun. That shit, that shit, like oh my god, that fight was good. <laughs> like oh my god, I know. candidate. You know though, like if someone said to me, "Yo, Mark, I'll grant the wish for you tomorrow. You can either be." You can either be pound for pound number one, or you can be the number one heavyweight in the world, which I'm picking. I'm picking the number one heavy, bro. Uh, do you mean the heavyweight champion or number one round? It depends, man. The champion. The champion. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather be the heavyweight champion. I would rather. Undisputed, I'd rather be an undisputed heavyweight champion than a, than like a four weight world champion who's been unified twice. Nah, I would. I would go for the glory because uh, you could beat a. See, I think about it this way. Legacy has to meet finance. It has to, because this is pugilism. So the finance has got to be it. There's more money in the heavyweight division than more, 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 most divisions that are out there, especially now. But there's always Floyd. He was pound for pound number one, and he was getting more money than everybody. So, yeah. That's when, yeah, uh, that was after that's when the glitch goes, though. Yeah, true. Like, look at Mike Tyson and Ali, and then you look. Just look, the heavyweight division, I think, has always been the most glamorous. If, if Mike from 1987 through 1990 was around in this, like, for oh. four or five years, uh, like, yeah. 2000 through 2015, Floyd wouldn't have been the number one man. Yeah, yeah you're right. You know, Mark, you're right. You are right. You are right. That if, if that, But that's Mike, though, Mark. And that's why I don't, I, I can't, like, bro, Michael overshadowed. But that's Floyd, though. The only you see what guy I mean? It's not like I'm comparing Muhammad Ali, bro. But, bro here's the thing. but I'm comparing the dude who made the most money, the most money, the number one guy in a sport. For yeah, but they did, they did cross paths. Mike in 2002. I know, obviously, Mayweather was a money Mayweather, but, but at that time, Mike when he's fighting Lennox, I know he's towards the end of his career. Mike was the one who was selling out to MGM and all that. Floyd yes. was fighting. Somewhere in Grand Rapids. I'm not holding it. Until the De La Hoya fight, I don't think he became the superstar. But I was just saying, they were around about in the same era. They clashed towards the end of Tyson's era and towards the beginning of Floyd's era. It wasn't until those guys faded off and the heavyweight yeah. division kind of went into Europe. That yeah, that's true. Welterweights were able to take over. Like I mean, there was a point when you had like Leonard Hearns and Hagler and all that during the 80s. But that was... And that was also, once again, like, you had people who didn't really want to take to Larry Holmes because of Muhammad Ali. You know what I mean? Yeah, but Larry Holmes and Jerry Cooney was a really big fight, though. If you remember, My that was, favorite that was MMA really big... fighter retired today. I've always respected the hell out of this guy. He is a no-nonsense. A good fight. By the way, Holy y'all are missing a really good fight here. Man, fuck, fuck this fight. Khabib retired, man. My guy Khabib <laughs> retired, man. I always respect. Yeah, that was sad, I, I, don't li- I don't like MMA for real, but I like Khabib, man. That dude was just like yeah, a yeah. real fucking respectable ass dude, man. I'm gonna miss that guy. I heard LB and those guys are safe. <laughs> I don't know if it's true. I hope it's not true. Maybe they might try and fight him in some sort of exhibition, but I've heard about that rumor for a while. I don't think I don't been. believe for one second if Khabib says he's retiring, he'll fight Floyd for anybody when it's to do with his dad's death, mate. I don't believe. Yeah, it. I agree with that. I agree with that. No, no, I don't I'm not, not talking about UFC. I, was, I don't know. I, I don't think if he's retiring, then he probably is retiring. He's Bro, retiring yeah. because of, because he won't. Yeah. yeah, that was his last fight for memory of his dad, and he yeah, won't I fight know. ever again. 
I believe it. I, I, did, I didn't know about that before, but I've heard about that. That was a rumor going around. I don't think it'll happen, though. You could pull it off with McGregor. It's Habib, that's not, I don't think he'll sell as much. And, you know, you know, you know the build-up and all that. It's just one guy going to be doing trash talk. But Khabib, for UFC let's, to be... You know why you can't do that with Khabib? Because Khabib is not a showman, bro, in any capacity. Yeah. Inside the cage or outside of the cage, he's not a showman. He's just an athlete and a fighter. No more, no less. That's what he is. So what Mayweather needs out of that, he ain't going to get. Connor yeah. sit there and talk shit. So you're going to get what you need. But Khabib, this is supreme shit. Like, that's, that's uh, the monkey you're going to get out of that guy. This is I kind of wanted him to have one more fight. Because to go unbeaten in UFC is very rare. He was 29 and old. He's almost 30. Yo, what if I told you? I told my mans and them from uh, Siberia, this cat. Big Khabib fan. Just big any. Thing Eastern European, whatever. <laughs> I told that dude, Khabib is going to retire undefeated, bro. I don't see short of GSP coming out of retirement, and even then, it's not a given. That's the only guy I give a shot. All these other cats ain't got nothing for that man. God is on his side. George too old, man. George is too old to be honest. No, well, yeah, he's, he's too old. old. No, he's saying it, it is primal now. Uh, now, obviously, it's too old. Then. Oh. Like, like, but because George is a serious competitor and a serious athlete, you give him a better chance than some guys. But like I said, it's it's that's that's it, George. Because Khabib got God on his side. You're not gonna beat that. That dude. was a very good win. That was a good fight as well. I know, granted, it's only two rounds, but Gaethje. What about he's a good Ferguson, fighter. bro? And Tony Ferguson, the yeah. dude that got beat by Justin Gaethje. Yeah, yeah, that was. That was Although I will say this, I will say this with Ferguson, right? Ferguson, Ferguson would have been a better match from like two and a half, three years ago. That's when it was supposed to happen. Of course, Ferguson is thirty-eight but, years old, bro. Like, what are y'all yeah. on? Like, but that's what he just said. In, he just said three years ago, but so I think he uh, Habib's had a lot of good wins, and that is probably the right time to retire as well. After what happened, man, he's my fucking god. Shout out to Habib. God is on your side, bro. Now, you had Julius, did you see that? Did you see that? Uh, did you see that uh, Khabib? Um, what was it? Oh, did you see that like little thing they did with the mountain and animation with his dad, him and his dad, and the mountain animation and like the career story? Did you see that promo? I didn't, I didn't see that, dude. Was I was nearly fight? in tears. Dude, I was nearly in tears. I gotta show you this, Jake. Hold up. I gotta. You gotta watch this shit. You gotta watch this shit now, bro. This shit's unreal. Hold He's on. pound for pound in it, number one. So he achieved yes. the oldest thing. Who the fuck goes 29 and 0 in, in, the, yeah. in UFC, bro? That's insane. That's fucking he had John bro. Jones ranked ahead, I don't know, for a while. But I think he should have been one. I think right now he's one. So it's a perfect time to retire. And yeah, UFC go, to be unbeaten is hard. Jay, watch this in the private chat, bro. I'll send this to you now. You've got to watch this now, fam. I'm telling you, man. This shit will watch, fuck I, you. I'm going to watch it, but not right now. We chatting right now. We got to fucking entertain these people. Yeah. Nah, bro. You got to... The fact you ain't seen this, you got to see so this. We bro. know who God rooting for now. Man, Jay Mondo, you know what you need to do? You need to just stop being miserable, bro. <laughs> if I said that the man has God on his side because I know he's a devout follower of Islam, just chill out and stop being mad at people. Yeah, yo, Batubia reminds me of him, man. Obviously, but, he's yeah. nowhere near like pound for pound on in boxing, but yeah, but better like, be that's the, you know what? yeah. Him and better be the men of principle, and it's in the eyes. Everybody can't see it, right? Right? Look, I'm yeah. I'm gonna keep it a bean with you. Everybody can't see it. I can see it. You understand what I'm saying? You got them that mean streak. Not, them dudes, it's not. I ain't talking about mean. It's not that. Them dudes is honest dudes. Them like yeah. Khabib is an honest dude, bro. That dude is not about the showmanship or none of that BS. He fight. I fight. I beat people up, and we gonna fight, and that's it. I don't gotta. I really want to. Go ahead. Go for it. Go go. I was just saying. I really want to see, Batubiev and Kovalev fight a couple of years ago. I think Batubiev would probably have knocked him out. I think Batubiev Ward would have been a really interesting fight. I don't I mean, think Kovalev was that good on the inside. I mean, look. If if we talking about that Kovalev. And better be fight that is never gonna happen now. You know what I mean? It's no hard. Because, you know why it's hard because of Johnson and because of Jeff Page. 
How big would that fucking fight be, though, in Russia, man? How shit. Yeah, it would have been a good fight. Uh, it would have been big in Russia. It's like I Kovalev, think... Kovalev. I know that Kovalev's no good on the inside, but if we're talking about, okay, if Kovalev would have fought Better Beef in his prime, where was Better Beef when Kovalev was in his prime? Because we got to try to match him up. And at that time, the natural choice would have been Kovalev based on experience. All right, I got to say, just a bit was fast tracked. He fought. Tavoris Claudin is like six fight. I'm not seeing. Yeah, but everybody the same... no, no, I'm not seeing that. How that Tavoris Cloud fight, bro? Like, yeah, he What's beat. That? Everybody was too high off of that to me. Like, all right, he beat Tavares. No, but what Cloud. did you see? He was mandated. I don't know what happened because he signed with Al Heyman and the PPC, and that kind of stalled his career. But he did yeah, have momentum. Is... That I is. think Kovalev was the only guy that could... Ma- they, they and you know that was the issue, that right? You know that's why he was trying to get away from Yvonne Michelle yeah, because he said exactly. he wanted to fight three times a year and he was not fighting three times a year. Yeah, I'll ruin that career. He almost ruined that career. For a couple of years, I, he was way too inactive. Didn't he? he had problems. But I think on the outside, Kovalev, obviously, he was a big puncher at that time. He was dropping guys like cop. I say that Ward. because of the jab, bro. Kovalev's yeah. jab when, when he was, you know, when he was still the crusher. And it's he not because crack. I don't, yeah. I don't like Sergey Kovalev as a human being, but I'm just talking boxing that all right, if we talking prom Sergey, if prom Sergey would have went up against Better Beef when he was still around and he was still, you know, in his prime and all of that, Kovalev, I mean, Kovalev fuck around would have beat him. But it would have been a cracking fight, man. Kovalev on the outside with the right hand jab. Then Batubiev on the inside. And I think they both were one and one as amateurs. Or I think actually Batubiev, I think, beat it twice. But I think Ward was saying that Kovalev did have a very good jab. And Kovalev probably would have been the favorite, but it would have been a very good fight. Obviously, right now, I think Batubiev might kill the guy like that. That's a dangerous fight for Kovalev. Oh, yeah, man. You can't fight that fucking guy now. Better be but not later. <laughs> I still want to see the B-Wolf fight. I don't know how long we got to wait for that. Like but... I said, when they fight, because and I figured it's going to take a thousand fucking years, when they do fight, I go b because b is the younger, fresher fighter. b a box is boxer is his puncher. Like, uh, I, I I understand like why you could pick him. I, I think after the Gvozdik fight, I would probably lean towards Batubiev now. Before that, I thought b would uh, be the favorite. But I did pick Batubiev. Hold on, I see, I see Khabib slander. Khabib is a saint, bro. What the hell are you talking about? That dude is the nicest dude ever, bro. He saved my village from a grizzly bear. What are you talking about, bro? You're not from Dagestan. You can't talk about where we're from, bro. We wear the big yellow hat. <laughs> it's cold outside. Those hats are what, sick, bro. <laughs> you don't know what that big yellow hat is about, bro. Chill out. Just eat some fast food, son. Chill out. Khabib is a saint. Yeah. Country. I was gonna say, you know, the fight tonight is even who's the other guy, Canadian guy? Because I was looking forward to Abdul Kakarov. Uh, Castillo is uh, uh, Clayton Castillo. He can box. He can box. Well, what happened to Abdul Kakarov though? Visa. I visa. I'll explain this. I'll explain this. He got rejected for visas like three times or whatever, and eventually, like he's just out there getting a visa yesterday. I think it was. He got a visa yesterday to be able to go to the states. He had to go to Malaysia to get a damn visa. Wow. Yeah, so he went from Uzbekistan fight. to Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, to get like to get a visa, man. I saw that up on Twitter. Yeah, I'm from that crazy? Ice, man. I'm from over there. Like over there, we start off wrestling squirrels and we work our way up to <laughs> bigger, warm blooded mammals. You, know what I mean? like, you better stop that shit. <laughs> you start off with a squirrel, then you move to like a like a like a weevil, like a weasel or something like that. Then you can work your way up to a mongoose, and from the mongoose, you fight a bear. That's how it's No, it's, it's not. That's You go from the mongoose to the badger, and then you go yeah. to the bear. Because badger, yeah. badgers are indestructible. Yeah, yeah. You work your way up to the badger. Like, I'm from Dagestan, bro. I got a big yellow hat on right now. What do you guys think? Is Boatsy ready for Bival and those guys? Hell right no! <laughs> Hell he no! He should be, should be stepping hey, up, listen, because man. people give... He- Beats gonna get be- mad. Beats is gonna get mad at me when he hear this, but Boatsy, yo, like pump the brakes, bro. Like, and I'm not talking to Beats that when I say this, I'm saying that <laughs> the way that they pushing him, he hasn't yeah, yeah. really, he hasn't really shown me. I like, I like how he boxes. I like how he looks, but I haven't seen like a world, a real solid world level win yet, and that's okay. I don't expect one 
from somebody in at that stage in their career. But the way they talk about him, it's cats that think he would beat people. Overhyping him. Crazy. The, th the thing I don't like is Yard had like about five to ten amateur fights, if I'm correct, maybe a bit more. And they were taking the piss out of him, but he turned professional. Yeah, he turned professional. No, 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 he said 15. Uh, I checked the other day. I think he said five, but I checked it says 15, I think, on Google somewhere. But he he was an Olympian. Uh, Boatz has been Olympia. I think he turned professional in 2017. Yad, three, four years in, is fighting Kovalev in Russia. So by hey, man, this time I'm, next I'm, year... I'm going to tell you one goddamn motherfucking thing, right? In that fight in Russia, in uh, Chelya Binks, that Yard had, I'd wager that he derived a lot of professional experience that was positive, even though he lost, from that fight. Yeah, yeah. Buatsi don't have yet. I don't knock Buatsi. I don't hold that against him. But that's just the way it is. Like, him having that fight, Y'all having that fight, win or lose was beneficial. Win or lose. Yo, no, but I'm saying this. Okay. But next time, they'll have been professional for the same time. Yeah, uh, Boatsy will have been a professional by next time. The same time last day, Yad stepped on Kovalev. And I'm not saying Yad, the guys Yad fought went that good, but like people look at Boatsy's competition. That's not really much better. He's had a much bigger uh, whatever... Better. Now you I'm can't say you, you're not allowed to say that because Buwati had Buwati beat a guy who was coming off of a two and a half year layoff who had a draw a super middleweight with Bobby Jack in 2014. You can't say that. <laughs> who's, who, who's that? Who was that with <laughs> Paravan? Oh, the guy you oh, beat in the last fight was that the second? Oh. Was it the second best Croatia? No, I don't. I think that guy was a decent. No, that's fighter. college. That's college. Oh, college. I thought you said college. No, that was Paraban, a decent fight. Paravan. He beat Reynold Quinlan, but that was like on a couple of decent. <laughs> people know. better not debate me on Joshua oh, Buatzi and other people. Champion Reynold Quinlan, the IBO champion that 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 um that you <laughs> think beat. <laughs> on two days ago, yo, you know lay off Reynold Quinlan, bro. He... <laughs> that was on pay per view, man. My God, that he was uh, he was on pay per view in the UK, Julius. <laughs> oh, yo, you didn't knock out Daniel Gill, though. Boy, so we gotta give him that. Throw his name up. I forgot he fought that fucking dude for the IBO. <laughs> that was on pay per view, but that's the thing I don't get. Like people, the Golovkin fans that say yeah. Daniel Gale was a good win. Daniel yeah, Gale got knocked out. Quinlan knocked out Daniel Gale in the second round, right? And then he lost to Eubank. He beat Bajawa, <laughs> and since then, this is his record. Are you ready? He lost to Damian Hooper, Joshua Buatz, he top uh, Cesar Matteo Tapia, Mark Lucas. And Tej Pratap, whoa, Tej Pratap Singh. Yo, Beats oh. is here. I got a lot of more. Beats is here. <laughs> I got a lot of more. <laughs> Yo, it's all kinds of Buatsi slander going on tonight, Beats. You ready for that shit? You know what I'm All I'm going to say is I honestly feel that from him having lost that fight, he gained experiences that Buatzi just don't have. Buatzi have, has not fought somebody like that as a professional yet. I yeah. don't hold it against him. I don't hold it against him because I don't expect everybody to be fast-tracked. But because Yard fought that dude, he got something there that Buatzi just has not experienced yet. You haven't been in there with nobody like that. Yeah, and, and Yard, Yard didn't look the... bad. Yard didn't look bad for some of them rounds. Like He was hanging in there. They fought the most vulnerable champion, but I mean, there is still a WBO title, so but no one's saying Boxy got to go in there and fight a Bival or Batubia this time next year. But I do think he should step up. Kalic was maybe decent next one, maybe you should see someone better. But I don't know, right now, him and Yard, I would probably favor Yard, but I don't think that fight's happening because Yard, out of his own mouth, said they want to build that up to a world I want to see fight. Yard versus like I'm not Yard I want to see like Buatzi versus like Sullivan Johnson Barrett. Johnson would be decent I think I think that's I'll tell you who I'd like who I'd like yeah, to see bro. I'd like bro honest to God I, I would like to see him fight uh, Shabransky mm. who's that Shabransky yeah that's not, <laughs> no, that's not bad that's not bad Shabransky been in there with people I forgot. What has Shabransky done recently? Since he lost to Kovalev, I kind of lost track. He did uh, He did have a good fight with Barreda before that, but I can't remember recently. Well, Shabransky, what he's done recently? 
Right, he carries one of the best names in boxing. His name's Shabransky. That's sick. That's true. Nah, but he just beat Felix Valeri. The good? Damn, Felix Last can't year. catch a break, man. He can't catch a break. When I but that was a DQ. It was a DQ win. All right, all right. Because Felix ain't half bad. He ain't, he ain't half yeah, good. Yeah, Val- Valeri is a good... I'm Valera's just saying it's a good guy, uh, it's a good step right. up. Shabransky's a solid yeah. step up, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Valera, Valera's Valera's a smart move. He's like not a shot to... fighter or anything like that, but it Buatsi should be able to beat him. He's physical, like other than that, uh, if he were to do something like that, maybe fight the loser of the Vlasov Salomov fight. Mm, mm. That's not bad. I like that idea. Because they're in a final eliminator, aren't they? So if he been to like if he if Lasov were to lose that, he'd be going against a very big Lee heavyweight who knows how to box and move. Uh, if Salomov were to lose, he'd be he'd be in there with a guy who can punch and throws good body shots and will make you work and has good angles. So I mean he'd learn one way or the other. And he'd be heard, going into world level. I heard motherfucking Zerto might fight Bevo. I'll yes, take, sir. I'll take it. Zerto gonna get fucked up. <laughs> Zerto gonna get skilled by people. <laughs> sure. If anything, Bawati should be fighting Zerto. Because Zerto ain't fought a live body a, a live body in ever. I'd I'd be worried about that size though, bro. Like he need... <sighs> Zerto's huge. He is though, he is. He make Benavidez look small. Like he when, he, when he, bro, that's one of the biggest lawyers in, buck, in boxing history. Zordo was six foot two. This dude's six ten. He's something. He's big. That what dude takes one step and covers half the range. <laughs> but for all that size, he's really not that heavy handed a puncher. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was he was weakened from making super middleweight for so long because he's a big fucking guy. I, th- I think what it is, what I think what it is, is kind of simple. Like, he's so tall and everything. I think it's just he doesn't have, like, he's not filled out to his natural weight. His natural weight is really, like, a 242-pound heavyweight. Probably. You know probably. I mean? Yes, probably. If, if I'm he's, being... Yeah. It's like Callum Smith, man. That dude, that dude listed on box rec at 6'3", as a lawyer, too. He's 6'5". Do you see him next to Hassan and Dan? Bro, that dude is massive. He made Hassan look like a hobbit. <laughs> yes, but I was gonna say, like a fucking habit. Is there any truth to that Fury fighting that guy? That MT- I know it's a fake MTK account, but I seen some Canadian. No, there's no there. truth to him fighting Simon Keane. There's some Canadian yeah, journalists that report that was fake, bro. Because MTK I don't Global know. don't follow me. Whoever account that is, they follow me, and I know MTK. I'll K- tell you who it is. I'll tell you whose account it is. Do y'all remember the fake Boxing Kingdom account? Oh yeah, yeah, Boxing Kingdom. Oh, the one that tweeted yeah, Boxing Kind. And originally, that was that was originally the fake Frank Warren account, which was originally originally the fake Uback account, which was originally the fake Shane McGuigan account. No, but I seen some legit Canadian journalists say, and they've tweeted in French, and I was on a hangout with Dan the Man and a couple of those guys. They also say... There's Canadian journalists that are reporting. There's some rumors going around. Yeah, they're so reporting I, I it from that fuck. tweet. They're reporting it from that tweet. Because yeah, it all came out after that tweet. They thought it was MTK. This happens all the time. Like, look, just it was just the other day, right? The same account under a fake Michael Benson, right? Oh, said yeah, that yeah, yeah. they Pulev. said, and I quote, I quote, that Pulev has pulled out with the Anthony Joshua yeah. thing. And then two, and then a day later, you heard people like Dean White and everything saying, well, I heard on the grapevine. <laughs> That uh, <laughs> Pulev's actually pulling out, People and they're all YouTube looking... videos about that. But I seen a couple of YouTube videos about that, so I thought that was uh, Dean White. I think got it from that account then as well. Yeah, if two, what cause... motherfuckers need to start watching the motherfucking relay because we didn't report on that shit. I knew that shit was fake. They said yeah, I knew it too, man. That's why I didn't run with it either. I knew that shit was fake as hell. It was fake, man. I don't mind the Crawford Brook fight because I don't think that's on pay per view in the UK. Um, I don't well. mind. Look, I'm, I'm gonna tell you again. I'm gonna say it again. I said it yesterday. I'm gonna say it again. If motherfuckers let Danny Garcia fight fucking Adrian Granados and yeah. Ivan Rickatch, do not turn your motherfucking nose up at Kel Brook. 
I think what if you what good. if you turned your nose up at those two fights too? <laughs> then what you have to accept is the reality of the situation. He's being frozen out. What can you do? What can you do for real? What can you do? You gonna let them bully you into crossing the street? Because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to bully you to cross the street. Who's better than Brooke? That's not associated with PBC at 147. I don't know if there's many guys. To I mean, be for me, for me, like, and people will be like, oh, Mark, shut up. I would have rather seen him Ray Robinson. Nah. But someone who's a name as well. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. You're I, don't, right. I don't care about the name. I just compare about the competitiveness. Cal Brook hasn't fought in three years yeah, at welterweight, yeah. and he was struggling to make weight then. He doesn't even have his train or, or his promoter involved. In he this hasn't way. fought at welterweight since 2017. But the thing is, if Brook is healthy at the weight, I do think he's got a lot of skills. The only thing is, we're hinging on something. We don't know if that's like without a trainer, without making welterweight since 2017. The signs are not good, but if he can do it, I think he could put up a better fight than whoever's, uh, whoever else was available. Because outside the PBC guys, I can't think of many guys. Ray Robinson, maybe that was a decent fighter, but he's already fought guys like Cavalasquez, Benavides. I think Brock maybe does tick a lot more boxes for the time being. The good thing is it's not on pay per view because they can't fight. I think that got backlash from being on pay per view, but I think after this, hopefully Crawford could get a fight with Pacquiao or Spence. And I think if he beats Pacquiao, I'll probably have him number one, but I doubt that fight will happen. Well, no, none of them are going to beat Manny because he's going to fight Mikey and retire. Yeah. But Spence said he wants to fight uh, Pacquiao next. But he's also well, of course called he like said that. Everybody yeah. says that. Everybody says that. I want to fucking fight Pacquiao next. Shit. I want to fight Pacquiao next, man. But he's also calling out... He's calling out Canelo. I don't think... I think Canelo... Call me out. I'll fight Manny tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Will you fight Canelo? I think... I think Canelo destroy him. I I don't think that's a bro. I, I, yo, bro it, all jokes aside, not that I think he's serious because I know, but if they ever put Little Arrow in the ring with Canelo, I got a thousand dollars on Canelo Alvarez. <laughs> a thousand. That's all. I know, right? I could bet more, but that well, would just. I'm, I'm putting the mortgage guy. up on that, bro. <laughs> I'm putting I'm the mortgage gonna, up on Canelo. I'm a family guy. I can't do that. But I thousand dollars <laughs> for Canelo because I know this. Arrow pillow fisted ass could knock out a lightweight. So you damn, and if, if it goes to the cards, you're not beating Canelo on the cards. So you, I mean, you just four way fuck. I think Canelo could stop him. He'd probably knock him out inside eight to six. I'll say one two. thing. I, I do believe Errol can... I do believe Errol will be, like... In the... Like, I'm not saying he'll be able to win more rounds or whatever, but I'm just saying he'll be able to do a bit more damage, I think, than Amir Khan did, if you get what I mean. Yeah, but that's not saying much. And the thing is, I... I, I Look, I, I, if yeah. Amir Khan was allowed to fight Canelo, Errol Spence should be allowed to fight Canelo. Yeah, I get that, but what I'm trying to say, I don't think it's going to be competitive. With Khan, I think they were just waiting to time him. We see now that ended. Khan almost got... Yeah, like... That, that was almost his death there. Yeah, like... like Could you I, imagine Errol going into the pocket with Canelo? Because Errol's a come-forward inside for him. <laughs> Could you imagine him fighting in the pocket? With I don't think Errol was going to... really like beats. That, he like. said he got $10,000 on Spence. Beats, if you don't... That's play. not beats. That's not beats. That's not beats? <laughs> what the fuck? No. You sure? <laughs> I yeah, hundred percent. That's not sure. I'm I'm sure, hundred percent. Yeah, whoever that is is trolling. And ten thousand on Spence. What the, I was gonna can say. Can I give you? Can I give you a piece of evidence, Julius? Let me see. Right. Have a look at their name. Right. Uh huh. Now, I'm just gonna. Now you you're taking in the name, right? I'm uh -huh. gonna show you some. I'll, I'll show you something on that Twitter in a sec. All right. You ready? Yeah. Go hold to on, your Twitter. Hold on, I'm not next to my phone. Hold on. I'm not, I'm about to go smoke before this fight start. Is that fight coming up? I'm going to have to jump off there. What is the, the, uh, the fucking Lippin Lippin Yet? That's wow. about to come on. I'm just saying to TJ. Just saying to TJ. All right, I'm going to look at it when I get back in the crib. I'm about to smoke this bug. Right, I was just going to say one thing. I could see Spence somehow surviving, taking it late, but I just can't see him 
winning anyway. I could see Canelo stopping him, TKO, but Listen, I think it'd probably be more competitive. Him, man, time. like it's certain shit that's too stupid to argue for me. Like, yeah. bro, the dude couldn't drop a lightweight, right? To top it all off, even if you could drop lightweights, Canelo has a goddamn chin, bro. Like, did we forget that? That dude could take a punch, man. So you're not you not life and death with Porter as well, like. Yeah, like you're not beating <laughs> you're not beating Canelo on the cards. So if you go 12, you definitely not win it. And in all likelihood, you don't make it 12 rounds because he will knock him the fuck out. You know what That's this reminds me of? Simon calling out Canelo, and then I think he got wobbled by who was that guy? Soto Carras, and then he started getting hurt by guys like Bro, he uh, got hurt by Chavez. Colorado, he got wobbled by Carras, he got wobbled by yeah. Lopez, he got dropped by Manny. <laughs> like, bro, yeah, then he, he stopped get... calling out Canelo. He was calling out Canelo 2013-14. And I remember he started getting hurt by guys like uh, Calazo and uh, what's the guy's name? Soto Carras. Like, I think this is similar. Maybe I don't think Spence... I think Spence has got a better chin. And I think Thurman's a bit fragile to the body, but the guy's never fought above 147 or at least a uh, elite fighter 154. Like To bro, go to 160, that's a Thurman big jump. Thurman is Mr. Glass, bro. That dude is Mr. Glass. <laughs> like, he missed the glass, bro. Like, come on, now. You talked all that shit to start the fight off by getting dropped by Manny. That is yeah. so fucking... <laughs> That's fucking wow, bro. It couldn't have happened to a better guy, I swear. It couldn't have happened. You took all that <laughs> shit just so you could start the fight off getting dropped. I think that was a really good win. Manny showed a good chin in the end as well. Yeah, he did. He did. But he I, did. Do, I was, uh, to be fair, I was watching the first round. I think Sp- Thurman was winning that until he got dropped. Like, no, he was. Yeah. Thurman, yeah, Thurman he was. was well on his way to winning that round till he got dropped. <laughs> based, by the way, based on that one thing, Based on that one thing, that's a three-point swing in the fight on those judges' scorecards. If Thurman didn't get dropped in that round, he would have won it, right? Yeah, he would have. Which means I mean, he actually would have won the fight. Listen, I, don't I, had the fight, I had the fight six rounds to six with that knockdown really? being a starting point. I, I had it seven eight, rounds four. to five. I had it seven rounds to five with that knockdown. I think I had eight to four. I thought Pacquiao you clearly. He hurt him in another wrong way. Thurman almost went down. I, I don't know. I think Thurman won about three, four rounds. Four rounds probably is about right. But yes. the, the way the judges scored it, they were trying to give that to Thurman because one of them actually had Thurman winning. Yeah, Virgil, even Virgil though he got will dropped. fuck around Stop Brook. And I'm going to say that Virgil will fuck around Stop Brook at 54 because this dude, he's a bit, he, he's big for welterweight. You can't tell because of the TV. But Virgil is a big kid, man. Like, he big for welterweight. He like 5'10". The rest of these guys yeah. that welterweight away is like 5'6", five, 5'7", six, five, 5'8". Five, like, Keith ain't big. Keith ain't but what, 5'7"? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what's listed. Anyways, yeah, I'm going to jump off, man. Good speaking to you guys. I'm going to cut the fight. Uh, is it because Max DeLuke is putting penis in the comments? Look at the, Like, why is he drawing penises in the comments? I mean... <laughs> it's like, what's wrong with this guy, man? Like, Check Twitter. Hold on, I ain't in the house yet. I'm still on the balcony. What's good, wait, country? Uh, wait, how did you see that then? I see it because of the chat, bro. How how are you able to see the chat if you don't have your? Wait phone? a minute, you said, did you send what you sent via Twitter or did you send it via Twitter? Yeah, I got the laptop out here. When you be telling me check Twitter, I check it through my phone. Oh my god. No what extra- on, hey, what's up, fellas? How you guys doing? I was rocking. No extra credit in boxing. Crawford should try to break his face like Triple G and spin. Well, he got metal plates there now. He ain't going to be able to break the same spots. Unless you want him to crack his skull. <laughs> like, <laughs> shit. I'm interested in seeing the fight just because I know it, that was two years ago or more that he fought Arrow, but it's still it'll be a common opponent, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I think, if for what it's worth, I think Brooke is going to get there okay. Because I don't think Brooke would want to do it unless he knew that he could. Which means, right. Clinton Bow, somebody. I don't else. think he's all that shot, man. He really isn't. Look, if we're being honest, right? If we're being honest, Brooke is in a better condition now than he was before he fought Arrow. That's just the truth, yeah. bro. Right. 
It's just the truth. The dude was coming off a loss and surgery. At least now he's coming off of wins. Hey, but question. Nah. Who's Joe Smith Jr. fighting next? Uh, I don't know yet because he already Who's won he his fighting next? He already won his portion of the tournament. Vlasov and Salomov got a fight now. Yeah. Okay. He's winning the winner of Salomov and Vlasov. That ought to be good. Yeah, it should be good. It, but I, I, I think Joe going to win that belt. I really do. It's going to be hard if he's fighting Vlasov. That's all I'm saying. Well, and I've been saying this, Julius. You know this. I know. I know. Bro, Thurman, will, Thurman will not sneeze in the direction of virtual Ortiz, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. You well, like, nah. He not going to fight somebody like that. This dude won 10 million for Crawford. Nah, bro. <laughs> let's throw him in there with a let's throw him in there with a with a big ass with a big ass kid who has no market value yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah for Crawford, that's hilarious, man. Like, like, there's Crawford. no, there's like, look for Thurman, and this is the honest truth. If he went in there and beat Virgil, I, 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 I'd rate it. I'd say well done. But you yeah. know full well most people are gonna be like, oh, he just beat a prospect. Yeah, he's not gonna take a chance like that, bro. He taught he no. mentioned Ugas. It's it's funny as shit because he mentioned Ugas. And I was thinking, I know you really don't wanna fight Ugas, but you probably gonna have to because you're not you're not gonna get Manny. And Arrow fuck around and freeze I, you out and don't give a fuck about I you. I think the reason he's saying Ugas is speak I think he's saying Ugas because the possibility is that title's gonna go vacant for Manny. And it'll be Ugas versus Thurman for the super. So that's the reason why it's guess, like kind of, and he'd be the A side. And what was, what was with this double dog dare stuff for a rematch, man? Yeah, dog. Man. He sounded like the kid from a Christmas story, saying, "I love, I love, I love Thurman, bro. This is the only man who's able to call out everybody in the welterweight division and duck them all at the same time. Exactly. Never seen so much skills. He's legit. He legitimately did that. No, he did. He, he did. actually, in one interview, he called out Pacquiao, Spence, and Crawford in that one interview. And then, after about a minute and a half later, he says, "Well." What I would rather do, uh, I don't want to fight Crawford because his WBO belt, don't, the WBO title doesn't mean anything. And if it was Spence or Manny, I'd need a tune-up first. He managed to duck all three of them in, after calling them out. I've never <laughs> seen that before. Never. It's, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Shit is wild. Uh, Shit is wild. You'd, You'd have thought he'd be standing in a sandlot saying this shit, man. Double <laughs> you, know? you at your phone yet, Julius? Or are you still yeah, slacking? I just seen the shit. He put the and. I think he put the and between boxing and beats. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look at it on screen. Look at it on your stream yard, and you'll see the difference. Look at boxing, beats, and rhymes, right? And then let's go back and find that other shit. Where's the where's the um boxing? Oh, oh I... <laughs> see it? Do you see it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> these dudes got too much time on their hands, man. Like I don't I don't know. Like what is the point of doing that? Like these dudes, man. Like <laughs> I look now, look and look in the chat now. <laughs> nah, nah, I know, right? Like oh my god, dog. Like I know the symbols in the right place now. Look at it. <laughs> That's fucking wild, bro. Like that somebody would take their time out to do that shit is wild to me. Like it really is. Like you can't have a fake beats in your chat, man. You re it, because if he ever pops up, how can anyone have better be on the pound for pound list? And not, yeah, I agree with that. How could you have better be there and not Jamel? Like, come on now. Like, I ain't, I ain't caping. But that shit just don't make sense to me, man. Like, Let me have a look at my top 15 right now. Hold on. That shit just remember, don't make no sense to me at all, B. Like, how the fuck could you have better beef on there? But you don't have Mel? Mel has a good resume, man. Right. I'm looking at mine right now. Do I have Baterbiev above him? No, I don't. I don't have Baterbiev in my top 15. Because it don't make sense. Like, and I don't got nothing against Arto, but it's like, come on, you be Vosdick and who else? 
Hold on. Do you have him in your top 15 that you gave me, Julius? Hold on. Let me see. Uh, he's, he's the bottom of the top 15. He's behind everybody. Yeah, you had you had him 15th. You see, I couldn't put him ahead of Maris Bredis. See, I would – I Maris Bredis is on the cusp if he gets a second belt. If he gets a belt, he's in. A second one. I mean, Baterbiev hasn't beaten as many champions as Bredis. Nope. Right? Uh, he hasn't made. I don't think he's made as many defenses in total as Bradis. Nope. Um, and Bradis, um, he's he's a three time champion, so he's held three belts. Mm, that's. I would count that as he has a better body of work or a more robust body of work, and it's true that he does. I mean, he he was a champion. <laughs> like like better be. It's so weird because this dude always ends up losing time, bro. He lost time with Ivan Michelle. Now with COVID, he's losing more time. And then Baterbiev has the one good win, like proper good win in Vostek, right? Yep. yep. And then Breedis, he's coming court. off of... What? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. And Breedis has... He has... he He's coming off of the win over Dartikus, right? And whether people yep. like to admit it or not, whether people like this or not, he does officially have a win over Glavatsky. He's beaten Mike Perez. He beat Marco Hook. Yep. Right? He beat Dora Dola. Right? Yep. I mean, he's got the better body of work, man. Yeah, Way yeah. I mean, that, that's not a contest right there. Breedis are getting... More, like I said, if Breedis gets a second belt, he's going to be Actually, ahead of no. people. But Terbiev's made more defenses than Breedis. You sure? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Breedis has only made one defense. Bit? He's only made one defense. He beat Hook for the title, defended against Perez, lost to Usyk. Then after that, like he picked up the title against Glavatsky. That title went, and then he beat the Dartigas. One defense. Isn't better be courting age a little bit, though, now? I think so, yeah. I mean, he's about to be, what, 36, if he ain't already? Yeah, he's about to be 36. And by the way, Breedis, Breedis is younger than Baterbiev. No, you left out the most important part. Breedis is a Capricorn like me, so that automatically, he's a Capricorn <laughs> like me. He's a Capricorn, okay, like Usyk. he's a Capricorn like Usyk. He's a Capricorn like my guy David Lemieux, best haircut in boxing. He's a Capricorn like my guy, Muhammad Ali, Customato, George Foreman, Joe Frazier, Floyd Patterson. Capricorns, man. We in here. Bernard Hopkins, Roy Jones Jr., we in here, man. We in here. Uh, don't forget. Don't forget, Moist Star is going to be repping big to him. We need to back up. <laughs> we had this argument before. You got Muhammad, I got Joe Lewis. You know what I mean? That's all I got right. Sugar That's Ray right. Robinson, I got Sonny Liston, bro. That's all right. Ali beat Liston. Oh, please. Oh, please. Bro, I got Sugar Ray Robinson. It's game over. All right, all right, all right. I'm pretty sure Sugar got beat by Capricorn. I remember I looked that up. I'm pretty sure he got beat. <laughs> no, by you did. No, no, you never, you never <laughs> went through his career <laughs> resume. Break, there's <laughs> no way him. you went through his resume breaking down who beat the boy Star. To God, so. I looked at. He ain't got that many losses to have to skim through. And I looked and I found a <laughs> Capricorn. I swear to God. I swear to God. Well, all right. I'm going to do this for you right now, right? I'll do it for you right now, live while this fight's going on. All right. Tell me what well, Tell me what time period Capricorn goes through. All right. Capricorn goes through um, December 22nd through January 17th, I think it is. Huh. December 22nd to January 17th, yeah? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I remember I looked it up. I was like, I'll be damned. He did get beat by Capricorn. <laughs> I'll be damned. <laughs> right, so it's not Joey Archer. I see Stan Harrington. December what? December 22nd through um through January 17th, I believe it is. Uh, right, it, ain't, it ain't month. Let me see. Birthday. The birth. I'm, I'm already gone through. Hold on. Hold on. He was born. No, 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 it's not him. Right. Um, Mick Leahy. There um, it is. No, that's the death date. Fuck. That's the death when date. was Joey Giardello born? He was born 
17th of July. I'm going through them all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing the same shit. This Wasn't hey, Terry somebody Downs. Said, somebody said Ennis versus Ortiz. What do you guys think of that? I, I mean, that look, the fight makes sense. It does, but it ain't going to happen, and you know that. Like, it ain't going to happen. It does right. make sense, though. So far, no one more at any more. Gene Fulmer. Yeah, I just passed Gene Fulmer. It ain't him. Uh, is it? Th- I'm starting to think I was looking at the death date. <laughs> 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 I swear to God, I think I looked at the death date. I'm trying to say. And it's too. It, oh, my God. Hold on. No. Was it Ralph Jones? I think it was Not Ralph Basilio. No, nah, it ain't Ralph Jones. It ain't Basilio either. Is it Maxim? No, nah, it ain't Maxim. Maxim was born in fucking March. Yeah. He's an Aries. Fuck Somebody's it. trying to say creepy. No, bro, beat, I think I, guys, I, man. You know what I think? I think I ended up looking at the death date. That's what I think. And, I, I, ain't tur- and I ain't turpin, which leads us to only one guy left, and that's Jake fucking Lamada, and he ain't no Capricorn. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I looked at the death date, bro. Wait, somebody, wait. hey man, somebody, somebody in the comments tried to say Queefy would beat Ugas, man. <laughs> I don't I mean, if you if you believe that Queefy beats Ugas, let's make a friendly wager: fifty cash, fifty cash. Yeah, in the comments, man. Yeah. <laughs> Rocking, cause y'all act like y'all act like cause he beat Danny. I'm supposed to be high off of that. And the funniest shit is you ain't even really beat the shit out of Danny. Like you did. Yo, look at the yeah. fake me in the chat now as well. Look at this shit. Wait, it's a fake you in there? Yeah, a fake me and a fake beats. Where Who you guys agree? Uh, is that you? that's not you, right? That's you. No, that's not me. Fucking shit, dog. Wow, you got cloned. <laughs> Better be the top three hardest. Do you want to know how you know that's not me? I would never capitalize your well, name. I wouldn't no, give you that level of minute, respect. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, he's not top three pound for pound hardest punches because he barely fought anybody. So even in that, that don't make sense. You just going off for knockout percentage. from boxing. Yeah, we should be watching this for Jay. We should be watching this yeah, for I, I, I wasn't even paying attention to this shit. This is in the second round. <laughs> Yo, I literally went live for the fight, and I wasn't, and I wasn't even watching the shit. Yo, this is actually a good fight too. Clayton's putting it on Lipinets as well. I mean, Lipinets is trying to walk him down, but he can't. Like he trying though. It's only the second round. We'll watch how this materializes. Clayton's a good fighter. I kept telling everybody. Once is, I'll be honest. My prediction against Abdul Kakarov was Lipinets by stoppage. When I saw it was Clayton, I changed it to like a, a very close points decision, but I'm not sure even then. Clayton can box, and he's got good stamina. Very physical guy. He looks all right out there, to be honest. Looks yeah, he's right. an underrated guy. He's somebody who I was, I was looking at about maybe two years ago, and... They didn't really give him fights. They didn't put any value stock into him. But he is the type of guy who's actually solid. You know what I mean? That's a proper prospect right there. Man, that shot looked mighty fucking low to me, but reference. And and that's based, bro, that's based on my eye test. Now, I'm not Eddie Futch. But my eye test is unrivaled, bro. Look, Lepinietz has a better barber, so that settles it. He's got a better barber than he used to. He's got a better barber. Whatever fucking whoever was cutting his hair before should be shot. <laughs> he got a nice decent fade now. He got the goatee rocking. It's my guy Sergey. Look at the fake. What? It's hard to know who the judges are going to give a round like this because Sergey didn't get to do none of what he wanted, but. It's hard to, I mean, I could give that round to, to, to Clayton because I feel defensively he was better. Like, Sergey ain't get to do nothing because of Clayton. But we know that's not how these fucking judges are, man. We know that. Hey, what the hell's Mikey been up to lately, man? Has he even fought anybody at all? He's eating carnitas, bro. You ain't see how fucking fat he got? 
That dude got uh, no fat, bro. He 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 at cruiserweight right now. <laughs> I haven't seen him lately, man. Bro, I just seen a picture of this dude. I'm like, yo, I know you ain't about to fight nobody no time soon. You ain't because look at how like that. <laughs> nah, yeah, because it's like if you was about to fight somebody, then I'm a, like, then you just gonna get fucked up, bro, because you fat as shit right now. <laughs> his nickname, his new nickname, gonna be Super Porky. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. I seen that. I'm like, now I'm not even sure if he's gonna get the Pacquiao fight. Cause I'm like, bro, you let yourself go like that while you waiting on the Pacquiao fight, <laughs> Damn, bro. All right, let's see this round. Who hey, you Mark, you just to? commented again, man. <laughs> Who you gave that round to, Mark? The second. Oh shit, Mark! Fucking Mark! Mark, who you gave that second round to? Bro, I dropped off like in the last twenty seconds of the round because like it was an accident, right? Because I was about to start screaming over what was going on, and then I noticed that I dropped out of the chat by accident, so I had to refresh, and then I missed where I was in the fight, so I couldn't give it a full score. Well, your fake account just commented again, dude. Yo, Julius, why are you allowing a fake account of me in the chat, bro? Oh, <laughs> just well, let me just let it roam free. Just let it roam. Because you know I don't fucking moderate, man. Like that, I don't moderate. You know why? Because nine times out of ten, I'm not even paying attention to the chat. Just to deprive them of what they want. They want attention, so I don't give it to them. Thank you. All oh, right. I mean, Sergey does have a better barber now, so that's got. Oh, by the way, Julius, I'll show you my blocked list. Did you know that there's seven blocked ring IQs on my channel? Really? Wow. And not one of them is you. That's wild, bro. That's wow. That's seven. You want to know how I knew that three of them weren't you? How? Oh. Because they came onto my chat asking me, hey, Mark, do you want to do a collaboration video? I'm like, that ain't Julius. <laughs> well, honestly, That's... it's not. Like, look, I'm going to tell you something. If Julius wanted to collab, he'd DM me. Right. I'm gonna say that him. It's, 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 it's very observant of Mark to know that Julius doesn't actually do that. Like, Julius likes being alone. For yes. real. Like, <laughs> Always been that way, man. Julius is all, all by himself. Man. Have you any idea how many times I've hit Julius' message saying, "Yo, you want to join my live stream?" And he leaves me on red like I'm some bitch who's like who like did something once. From <laughs> I mean, like, and I, I hope nobody gets offended by that, but that's just that's my personality. I'm like, nah, I'm good. I'm good. Because yeah. I never guy, like, when I go live, Julie. for example, this is the closest I've ever come to scheduling lives, like, you know, during a fight, because most of the time I just go live because I don't feel like doing a video, so it's unscheduled. I just do it on a whim, like, you know what? I don't feel like editing right now, so I'm going to just go live. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. it's totally random. Do you, Donnie, you ready for this? Do you want to see me try Julius? Watch this. Uh-oh. Hey, yo, Julius. Yeah? How you say you want to be alone, but then say I'm part of the network, bro? You don't understand, bro. You don't understand, man. Like, it's like, how can I put it? I'm just used to just being in my own zone. Like, even when I was a kid, I had two sisters, right? My two sisters would be chilling and the whole family in one room. I'm in another room just doing my thing and drawing. That's just that's just me. Like, I, I like to do my own thing. I like to be for Dolo. I'm learning how to make I'm learning how to make thumbnails now. It ain't that hard. Usually there's pretty good one. Damn, that was a good shot. That was a good shot. Birthday yeah, but I want to make I want to make me own ones for when like because I'm working on a video right now for uh, that I think will do good views. Uh, top 15 most dangerous heavyweights for 2021. Mm. Hey, so who's winning the fight, man? Honestly, I'm getting the impression that Clayton is winning the fight. I have wow. no idea. I have no idea. I mean, it's it's just Sergey looked frustrated, bro. Like he, you know, you, you know what kind of fighter Sergey is, right? So you know what it looked like when he's winning the fight. Right now, he's just getting countered and shit. Like he's shaking and baking them and countering them. I am I seeing him land some more body shots in this round, though. He, yeah, he, he is. He is landing better in this round. Freaking virtual. Did Andy become Mikey Garcia's nutritionist? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> what did he say? Did Andy, did Andy Ruiz oh, become God. Garcia's nutritionist? 
Joe Watkins. No, he didn't. I know. I know who did though. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. Shit. It wasn't Andy. Unfortunately, it was. It was the same person who was Andy Ruiz's nutritionist though. Canelo. No, Gabriel Iglesias. <laughs> man, Clayton has this man confused, B. He has this man confused. Sergey. Mm. Man, they didn't turn Mikey into the fluffinator, man. That's uncool, man. He needs to get back I mean, to boxing. I mean, what that tells me is that maybe Mikey don't get the Pacquiao fight because how could you let yourself balloon and wait that much if you know that's your Did next Did you hear fight? his excuse? Did you hear his excuse as to why, like, he hasn't gone to the gym? Why? Because up in the gym, these guys are preparing for fights, and he ain't. And if he went somewhere and got one of the – and got, like, the corona or whatever and showed up at the gym – and gave gave it to somebody like anybody around there, it, it would cancel one of their fights. Oh wow, that is the that's his, that's his excuse. People. So what's your excuse for eating all that food, Mikey? <laughs> Man, look like because he don't have enough money for a home gym, I gather, right? Yeah, Mikey, <laughs> yeah, Gar- right. Mikey Garcia can't afford a home gym, man. Like I've got, even I've got like an assault bike and some weights and stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, Sergey, right. get this fucking shit out, man. I should use that more often, actually, that assault week. Well, the body shots, you're right about that, Mark. If he's getting off anything, it's the body shots. Yeah, I think that's his game plan because Castillo came in kind of uh, kind of late. You know, he was a late replacement that was meant to be out there. So he's probably going to try and invest into the body to make, try and get him out of there late or to take over later in the week. Clayton looks solid, though, man. He's a good boxer, man. Do you know what this kind of reminds me of a little bit? Tugstot Niambiar versus Breed. Mm. Mm. This is a better weight for Sergey, too, though. This is a better weight for him. Look more solid here. Uh, yeah, yeah. So any news about Ioka and Tanaka? Is that going to finally get signed, or are they just still kind of talking? We're waiting. We're as much in the dark as you are, man. We, we, yo, do you not think both of us are going to make a video the second that shit's fully signed? Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, exactly. Like, the day that fucking fight is signed, I'm going to fly to Ireland Shit on that front porch and fly back to America. Right, where I come from, Julius, right? Where I come from in my village. In my village. A man who threatens to shit on another man's front porch is a man whose throat you slit. <laughs> then I guess you just gonna have to slit my motherfucking throat because the day they announced that fight, <laughs> the day they announced that fight. It's yo dog. It's a rap. It's a rap. Yo, you know I swear, the day they announced that, the, the day they announced that fight, right? Julius ain't flying over here because one Americans aren't actually allowed to enter our country right now. No. However, I'll <laughs> fly to <laughs> yours because I'm allowed, allowed to. No, shut up, hold on. You can't enter our country right now because we're in stage five lockdown. I can enter your country, so I'm gonna fly to America the day that fight's announced, right? And I'm gonna pull up on your front porch and I'm gonna shit on your Narda John CD. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought y'all was out of lockdown. No, we're back in stage five. Why? What happened? They 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 took us out of lockdown. They opened up the school. Somebody shit on somebody's porch. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want me to shit on your porch, bro. Listen, no. Man. No, no. Because <laughs> I, I, I eat a lot of dairy, Julius. The day after that fight, all I'm going to say is don't be surprised. The day after that fight, just open that front door, bro. Open what's in the bag. Open the bag. <laughs> I, I, no, do you know what I like fire. about Let no, me explain this. Do you know what I like about this? What I like about this? Julius is a gentleman. Because when I'm doing it, 
There ain't gonna be no bag, bro. It's gonna be a big <laughs> pile of fucking manure. That runny shit because of the jet lag. You, on the other hand, you you, you have a high and fiber diet. It's gonna be more solid in a bag. You can open it up. It's not gonna require much mopping or anything. You, on the other hand, you're gonna be mopping and fumigating your part for a week. I'm telling you right now, I'm just gonna pick up the bag and throw it away. Let oh them, my god! Let those motherfuckers <laughs> announce. And you know what the good part is. Since since it's likely to go down in Japan, we get to wake up to that fight. I, I know I would get to wake up to that fight. That would be the first fight of the morning. Julius, oh, you know the Japan, you fight. know these Japanese cards for me, right? They're they're lunchtime for me. Do you oh, know how good it is to be sitting down with a sandwich and some soup and like yeah. just lean and watching like that's what I did with like a new way and then there. That's perfect for me, bro. Perfect. Bro, it's lunchtime you, for me. I gotta say one thing: the rivalry between you two over this particular fight is damn hilarious, man. <laughs> you guys all go I, back. Bro, so all much. I say, who told? Like, cause like it, it look a certain way because all we can do right now is review Kazuto's body of work, and it's not like it's not true. He is a more skilled boxer. He is like that's legit. If you gonna go off of what they did so far, logically. You would have to go with Kazuto, but it has always been the intangibles that make me lean towards Kose. It's Kose's time, man. I, I know why. Look, I'll, I'll put it like this: the fight could be very close, right? And Julius is betting on the upside of the younger fighter; he'll have more fights, and yep. that's what he's betting on. Yep. Well, I understand that. I'm betting on the lack of defense from Kose Tanaka, the parrying skills from Kazuto Ioka. The superior punch power, the fact that Kosei hates it to the body more than anybody I've seen. Whenever he gets tagged to the body and kills over, he's actually like Keith Thurman that way. And Julius is not going to like me saying that. But I've seen it enough to know that because I've watched all of his points. Jay hasn't. He's watched like three. And Kazuto, he's a mean body puncher. And I think he's going to slow him down and stop him late. And I'm actually oh, bro, convinced. Bro. All I'm going to say is it looked a certain way. Ahead of Lomachenko Lopez, but look at where we are. Look at where we yeah, are. Yeah, but I'll be, I'll be honest though. I'll be honest. For me, and this is just for me, I gave Tiafimo more of a chance against Lomachenko than I do Kosu. Now, now you're just taking the piss. No, 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 no. Piss. no. no. Piss. It's all right. Take the piss. Take it. Take I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really not. I'm really not. And when that fight happens, everything I've said here. Put it in your video. Oh, you'll see. You'll see. I actually have a feeling Julius records me every time I go on when we talk about this fight just to make the ultimate crow video. You'll see, bro. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Worry about it, bro. <laughs> you'll see. You'll but see Julius, you. I've also done the same thing. I've screenshotted every super chat. <laughs> 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 I've written songs about this. Bro. Oh, my God. Sergey and you liked bad. one of those songs. You got to admit it, Julius. You loved it. Uh, right now, I'm watching Sergey get lit the fuck up by Clayton. That's what I'm doing. He looking bad, man. And I'm gonna I'm gonna say something to Julius because he doesn't know this. Whenever me what? and Sean Newton agree on a fight, when it's below 135 pounds, uh huh. We've gotten them all right when we agree, and he's there's picked the Oka too. Bro, there's, there's a first time for everything, bro. None of that. There isn't. A, there isn't the first time for 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 Newton and un, the unrivaled Fig Newton to lose, bro. All right, all right. <laughs> one day looking limited as shit, man. Newton out there picking up apples falling from trees, man. Discovering gravity. Would the Abdul Kakarov fight have had a better aesthetic than this? I say yes. Yes, it would have had a better aesthetic, but Kakarov would have got stopped. <laughs> yo, I actually managed to get somebody to respond, but yo, chill on Norma Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Shit away hey, with me. Hey, Mark. What's happening? You in the horse races much? 
I will neither confirm nor deny, but no, actually, I'm not. I know a lot, I know quite a bit about it, but I don't bet on it anymore because that was becoming a problem. So I quit gambling on it, and I won't yeah, ever give some, anybody advice on it. You guys got some good tracks over there, huh? Yeah, I've been to like the car and everything like that, like Leopardstown and all that. Right. I've been to Cheltenham too. Yo, Clayton boxing well, man. He is, man. Like I, I like I don't like I, I don't know what round I can give Sergey. Everything I'm seeing is Clayton. No, I think it's close. I think it's close. Effective aggression, landing some inside body shots. I mean, Clayton this one you might need to bro, rewatch. Like occasionally, he's landing singles. He's not really getting off. Hmm. Hmm. Yo, hit the like button for Ring IQ, guys. Bro, he won't beg, but I'll beg. Post Spence, he'll be your mandatory. Errol said, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I ain't motherfucker. I ain't motherfucker. <laughs> who said that? Spence. To who? To somebody who told him the winner of this fight is going to be his mandatory. Wow. <laughs> That's okay. For Spence won't mind that. Watch them give this shit the lip and the ads in robbery of the century. All I'm saying, Julius, is Spence beats both of these dudes. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. I agree. He's he's they're what is the same old Spence, man. Yeah. <laughs> ah, nah, bro. I ain't falling for that shit. Seventy percent Spence beats these guys. I agree. I agree with that. Sixty-five percent of Spence beats lip and the ads. Spence didn't do anything against Mikey Garcia and still won the fight. Exactly. And Mikey didn't do anything against Lipinets and won the fight. Yeah. Now that's not true. That was a solid fight. But Mikey, uh, Mikey turned it up a notch. I don't know. I don't know. That, that fight he turned it up a notch and beat the shit out of him, to be fair, mate. He didn't really beat the shit out of Sergey. I remember walking away from that fight thinking this is your Whoa, Steve Farwoods has this 57-57? He has a draw. What, what round is it? He seven. gave him one, three, and six. Seventh We're round? Seven. We're in round seven right now. Okay. Oh, Clayton with the job to the buddy. Clayton ain't, ain't fucking around, man. He ain't fucking around. Isn't Clayton unbeaten? To my knowledge. Yeah, he is unbeaten. What's he like, 16 and all? Yeah. I'll tell you now what he is. I think he's 16 and all. I'll tell you right Wait. now what Clayton is. He's 18. Dude, and... Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go, Clayton. Get that shit, Clayton. Ah, uh, this was this was the fight that like put me on to him. He knocked out Chop Chop. Mm -hmm. Mm. Chop Chop Corley? Yeah, I know it was 2018, but at the same point, stopping a fighter like that, Chop Chop's still fighting, you know what I mean? And he's... Yeah. Yeah, Chop Chop has yeah. a hell of a lot of fights. This dude on what? 84 fights? Holy shit. Chop Chop is wild, man. I thought Chop Chop would have retired by now. No, no, no. Chop Chop, shit. Chop Chop fought Anthony Yigit, bro. That dude's still traveling and fighting. Wow. Yeah, he, he fought Vivian Harris in 2018, dude. He fought Vivian Harris in 2018. Oh. Oh, yeah, man. God, Sergey looks lost. Here's the thing about Lipinets. He's a war horse, bro. Right? And he's, he's physically, phys physically strong, bro. Right? But this dude is crap at cutting the ring off. Yeah, yeah. Why look we awesome. we saw last night how to cut a ring off when we watched Chocolatito. He kept him on those ropes. Bro, Chocolatito is one of the most underrated fighters in the 20th century. Underrated, that guy. Well, 24th century. Well, whatever century it is. So how much? Hey, how much you think Chocolatito got left in the tank, though? Enough to beat Estrada. He do have enough to beat him, man. But I think, I both, I think both those guys can beat each other. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get it twisted. And and Julius, Julius, 
you and I can complete. You and I can sit down and enjoy that fight as fans and not enemies. Yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't write off one. I don't write off one's chances because what they got yesterday, what they both got yesterday, is what they needed. If it would have been Estrada straight into Choco, oh, that's bad news. That's bad news. You you can't do that. He got what he needed. And Choco got what he needed in the 12-round fight. Because like Mark said, it's true. When he came back, he hasn't been 12 rounds since he came back. He's hey, what, like do guys, what, do you, what do you guys think about that Puerto Rican kid who can bang? What the heck's his name? It's Berlanga. escaping me. Berlanga. Berlanga. Yeah. I like yeah, that kid. You, I like that kid. I need to see him box. Did you, notice, did you notice how many celebrity friends he has, though? Like, That's because, bro. Like, listen, 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 Julius. It's the way. It's the way of the world. Knockouts bring celebrities. That's true. Right. It's true. It really is. This. If this dude gets the twenty and all with twenty KOs, people are gonna be mad on him. Don't forget. Like, unless like. You're marketed poorly. He's being marketed really well. That's you know true. what I mean? He's 15 fights in, and he's what? The co-main or the third? What was he, like, two fights behind the biggest fight of the year on ESPN? Yep. Yeah. That kid can hit, too, man. He hit hard. By the way, can I, can I give some credit out for one person, Jay? Right, because no one's giving this guy any credit. Y'all, y'all watch the card, right? Y'all watch the top rank card, right? Oh, which one? Yeah. Which one? The 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 card, the Loma card, right? You watch the card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I want to give a very big shout out to just Sway Vargas because he had the best performance that night. Yeah. Yeah. Against Kendall Castaneda. I don't, I don't think I caught it. Oh, I saw you, that one. Yeah, I saw he that beat, one. Yeah, that guy was so, pretty good. Man. He beat the shit out of him. Like just way, everyone's like, "Oh, he's already lost." Oh, but wait, he hey, it. didn't Castaneda take that on uh, like a couple days' notice or something? No, three weeks. Okay. And by the way, it was three weeks for Just Way as well. Okay. And let me tell you this: when uh. When Kendall Castaneda fought uh, Zapata, he had 10 days' notice. Wow. And hey, just what way, you, what way you, better than What's your guys' opinion on Nikita or Bobby, man? <laughs> I, I like I mean, he's entertaining. He's entertaining, but until he's in there with a world level opponent, it ain't about nothing. He's entertaining while he's fighting them kind of guys. And he's going to knock out. Them kind of guys. I'll sum it up to you. Any albino calling himself white chocolate immediately reminds me of Peter Cetera. Peter Cetera, the singer? Yeah. Shocking night and shining off. A long time ago. That's what we call him. Who win fight? That's my guy, Chicago man. Yeah, that's what I call him, bro. I call him the Satra of boxing. <laughs> Talk about that day in the park. I think it was the Fourth of July. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that Peter Satra, man. Bro, everybody needs a little time away. <laughs> Fuck, he was nice, man. Shit. That's some good. Peter Sather had a fucking incredible vocal range, dude. No, incredible. He did. He did. I, w- I wouldn't put him up there with Freddie Mercury, you know, but different Freddie- types, different types of range. Yeah, yeah. It's just that Peter Sater's, uh pitch is very distinct, man. And is, but he had hella range, though, man. You know who else had a great range was uh, Roy Orbison, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, when you think he's going from like, oh, it's all right, he's all the way down there, and then going open that one note, that's a three note leap. It's a lot of good uh-huh. But yeah, all the people, was great. Orbison, Freddie Mercury, they're all great, man. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you who was great, bro. Right. I'll give you two names. Y'all ready? Okay. 
great vocalist, the two of them, bro. Bobby Hatfield and Bill Medley. Bobby Hatfield. That name is familiar. Yeah, but I'm forgetting what he sung. I'm Bill Medley. I'll tell you exactly who they are. Those two were called. Those two were in a group called the Righteous Brothers. The Righteous. Ah. Brothers. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. And Bobby right. Hatfield is the dude who originally sung Unchained Melody. You lost that love and feeling. Yeah. You lost they... that love and feeling. Yep. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you go listen to those two dudes sing and listen to the range and listen to fucking Hatfield do, uh, do uh, Unchained Melody, fam. Listen to him. Oh, the harmony, yeah. No, it's the rage. It's the rage. The, the rages who, are sick. Who heard the marimba version of Take off <laughs> Me? That is my shit, dog. That marimba. Ooh. That, they, I didn't think you could make that song better. They actually made it better. And, and I mean that because I love that song. I love that song. I love the original. I didn't think it was possible to improve on that. I love the Tadaka version, you know? Tadaka is gay. Man, get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> Zoot does go to fuck up as they say what you'll say. Listen, <clears throat> you can talk about January, right? you know where to find me in the super chat. <laughs> talk that shit I'm while gonna you're gonna be in the really bad that? to know. Oh, oh, you owe me 20 bucks tonight. Bro, I'll hit that high note to prove a point. <laughs> talk, talk, that yeah, shit, man. talk that shit. I already know what's going to happen. I've seen it happen already. i seen it. I already know what's going to happen. <laughs> Bro, listen to me. Right? I was out. Right, guys, I need to let you in on a secret. And Julius is going to be afraid once I mention the truth as to why I know what's going to happen. It was about eight months ago. I left my house to go on a walk. And I went further than I normally do. I bypassed the gates in the Phoenix Park. And I got on the 46 D bus. And I didn't know where I was going. Anyway, I got into town. Into the city centre. And I was looking around. I got on another bus. I stayed on it until the very end. And I was out in the hills of Tarot out in County Mead. And out there, they have fairy trees and the fairy cave, right? Oh, right. Uh -huh. So I went. So I went down to the fairy trees, and I was looking around it, and an Irish elfin leaf. It spelt Ioka K O eleven. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. You were listening. I, I took, I took it, I took it down to Slane Castle, and I brought it <laughs> into it. Anyone who doesn't know where Slane Castle is, it's also on beat. Slane Castle is the home of the origins of where leprechauns come from. And I went up to King Brian, the King Leprechaun himself, and I walked get up to him with the leaves. And, and he looked at me, and he said, your wishes. King okay. Leprechaun himself. If I'm, if I'm being honest, you know what I... If, if I'm being honest, you know what I see? I see a controversial decision. That's what I see. I see a controversial decision. Do you know what I see? I see Go that ahead. segment. I see that segment of me talking going on to Ringo Q's Instagram. You'll see, bro. You'll see. What I see is a controversial decision. Kazuto is a, is a tough motherfucker that can box, but they're gonna give it to Kose. That's what they're gonna do. It was King Brian himself, the king of the leprechauns. He told me my wish will come true, man. You can't, you can't, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to the seriousness of my voice. I didn't break once that entire time. Listen, man. Controversial. I seen, bro, I seen it in the in the Elven Leaf of Ireland. What you seen? Oh, uh, look, look, man. I'm telling you, controversial decision. That's what it's gonna be. That's that's how it's gonna go down. That's how it's gonna go down, bro. Just, I'm letting you know. That's what's going to happen. Elvin Leaf. Hold on, hold on. My son is calling me. What do you want? Dan, can you believe this guy doesn't believe in the Elvin Leaf scriptures of Ireland and the leprechauns? <laughs> okay. right. hold, down the, hold down the chat for me, fellas. Hold down the chat when, for me. I'm really starting to doubt your intelligence, Julius. <laughs> 
He's not as smart as I thought. He always talks about these villages that he lives in in Chile and out in out in Dagestan and stuff like that. But I talk Elven Leaf and I'm crazy. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man, you guys are something else, I swear. I get a kick out of you guys over it. I think it's funny. Look, man, all I'm saying is Elven Leaf. <laughs> yeah, you can't. It's, that's hard to beat, Dan, man. Dan, book it. Okay. Have you seen Kazuto, though? He looks like an elf. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him. Look, tell me this ain't a Japanese elf. With those ears and sticking out and the smile, he's ready for Christmas, man. And come New Year, <laughs> and come New Year, the Santa Leaf is going to bring it to him. <laughs> he's got a future stake in any, any more Lord of the Rings films, huh? <laughs> Look, man, all I'm saying is Elven Leaf. <laughs> Bro, I wrote songs. I've got songs. Oh, I'm sure you do. The leprechauns, of Ireland, the leprechauns of Ireland, they're playing the violins. They've got the fiddles. <laughs> in the caves out in Kulanoi. So how hey how is it over there, man? Is it like is it are you, is it pretty wet over there right now? Are you guys getting rain and stuff or what? Man, no, we're getting frost. It's not ah. been rainy. It's just been it's just been kind of cold and icy and windy, but not really that rainy. I'd actually love some rain to be honest, but I wouldn't because it's really cold, you know. So that'll be hail right. sound. Right. <sighs> you guys ever get snow over there? Every, of course we get snow, but we don't get it all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because like I got a buddy who lives like over in like Spokane, Washington, and man, he, they got tons of snow right now. But I'm over here on Calif in California, in Northern California, and like we're, we got sun. <laughs> there ain't no. It's really not even cold, dude. It's kind of like warm. <laughs> Look at you rubbing it in. I'm over here in Northern California. I'm yeah, not man, trying I'm, to rub it in. Bro, I'm out here. Bro, bro. Listen, mate, I'm over here. Tom, listen, I'm over here talking to King Brian. <laughs> Tell, see if they can hook you up with the weather, man. Shit. They got powers. No. They have powers, but they don't operate with the weather. Because, right, so this is what Brian told me. He had this relationship this one time, right? Uh, <laughs> and I can't remember her name. Her initials were MN. She was this chick. She was a weather girl, right? Well, uh -huh. that's what he thought anyway. Apparently, she controls the weather. Her initials are MN. Anyway, it didn't go too hot. Okay. <laughs> and he's still pissed off, you know? And right. Yeah, he can't get any favors with her because if, if he ever tries to do any of the wishes for the weather now, like, apparently, she's got to, like, leak the sex tapes or some shit. <laughs> so, shout out to Mother Nature. Yeah, mute that sound in the background there, man. Can't let that come in. Oh, we're good. Yeah. A minute 55 to go in round 11. I'm going to do a little blow by blow here. Lipinets with no behind. Rui. Clayton trying to put his job out. Good job there from Lipinets. Clayton backing off. Rui hooked to the body there from Lipinets. Clayton trying to combo. Good hoy guard from Lipinets. Doubling up the job, backing them up. Balco is out the land on a couple of hooks there. Clayton with a big worry hook. Double stiff jab to the body there from Lip and Yetz. Lip and Yetz just walking him down now. Kind of over into the far right corner. They're going to the red corner right now. Lip and Yetz doubling the jab. Left hook to the body. That's a good left hook to the body. Balco is exchanging jab, land on a piece. Good stiff jab to the body there from Clayton. Check left from Clayton. Lipinets comes in with the job, misses, hits him to the body with the right. Clayton gets off of the ropes. Good torn there. That was a good torn. With 54 seconds left in the round. Bogo's exchange jab. Lipinets not landing a lot. Oh, good right to the body there from Lipinets, but he got caught with a straight right. Then Lipinets oh. goes for right himself. Two jobs apiece landed. Good work there from Boltman. He took that risk and paid the price. 
right hand to the body there from Lipinets. Scorecard's going to be crazy interesting. Mm, good job there from Clayton. Hey, Virtuoso, man. It's It gets cold there, but it's not that bad, but it definitely does get cold there. I was born and raised there. Rayhan there from Lipinets. Rayhan from Clayton. Bauko is with a good Rayhan. Job to the body from Lipinets. That's the end of the round there, lads. We're going to go into round 12 now in a minute. Who do you think's got this fight? I think it's close to a draw. It might wow. be like I'd say it's like I'd say it's like five five, uh, maybe five six to one guy, like six five to one guy. It's close. Like I know Ungar has it like six four to Clayton. I haven't. Been, I didn't score the first three rounds. I know the Farhood had it. Uh, he had it six five to Lipinets there. So. Another guy in the comments has it 6-4 Clayton. Yeah, that's Ungar, right? Yeah. Yeah. He has a 6-4 to Clayton. So, like, an Ungar knows his box, and I'll give him credit. I'll give him his credit. I think he might work in boxing. All right. Round 12, Bob goes touch gloves, guys. We're going to the last three minutes of this interim IBF title fight. The Bennett's just stalking him down, walking him down. Bogo's exchanged a jab. Jab to the body there from Lipinets. Lipinets went for the hook, but was blocked on the gloves there of Clayton. Clayton getting a jab in, but landed on the gloves as well. See, if you're going to win this fight, this is the round to do it. Right. Oh, big right hand to the body there from Lipinets. He hooked Clayton, but Clayton fired back with a left right hook. Yeah, Steve Farhood has this 6 5 in favor of Clayton. So it was 5 5 apiece in round 10. Big left hook there from Lipinets. Clayton with the right hand. Double jab there from Clayton and a right hand from Clayton. Left hook to the body there from Clayton and a stiff jab. Another good job there from Lipinets. Right hook to the body from Lipinets. Lipinets with a right hand upstairs. This is good work. Good job there from Lipinets. Lipinets with the right landing on the body. But Clayton lands a straight right there. Sounds like it, like they got good exchanges going on. It's singular shots. Good job there. Good job again from Clayton as well. Job there from... Uh, Lebanets. Lebanets gets the right hook to the body. Left hand left hand from Boko is landing on the right hand there from Clayton. Right hand to the body there from Lebanets. See, it's singular shots, but they're, they're doing it like close to each other. You know what I mean? So it sounds like they're exchanging, but they're not really exchanging. Exchanging, it's just boxing. Right. But, but Lebanets is keeping close to him. He's never really more than four feet away. Lipinets went for the right hand onto the arm. Lipinets missing with a body shot. Gets the left hand off to the body. Goes for the jab upstairs. Roy Hook coming in there from Lippin, uh, from uh, from Clayton. Another right hand there from Clayton. Stiff jab there from Clayton. Lipinets going for the straight jab. One two there from Clayton. He rocked Lipinets a little. Lipinets went for a big straight right missing. That thing was loaded up. Like one of Julius's live streams. <laughs> right hand to the body there from Clayton. Right hand from Lipinets. Jab to the body there from Lipinets. And that's the end of the round, guys. Julius, Good fight. Man, he's gone. Ah, he's 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 probably like he's probably gone looking for his he's probably gone looking for his own version of the Elven Leaf. <laughs> That's funny. It's 
it's going to be interesting to score cards. I wouldn't win 7 4 boy, no way. Probably going to give it the lip in the ads. Telling you. Welcome back, Julius. Uh, yeah, I come back as the fucking fight is over. Hey, Julius. <laughs> Julius. Yeah. Elvin Leaf. Listen, man. You can go by that Elvin <laughs> Leaf all you want. Controversial decision, Kosei Tanaka. On activity. Whether or not Julius. that activity whether or not that activity was effective is gonna be the contentious part. Elvin Leaf. Yeah, you go by that Elvin Leaf. You got the Elvin Leaf. You should be okay. Let's look at these punches. Can I tell you something about Elvin Leaf? I can tell you something about Elvin Leaf. It ain't going to help Kazuto Ioka went over them judges. I can tell you that. Power 42. I mean, shit. I know I know these shits is flawed, but, I mean, that that is what I saw. Clayton was getting off more than Sergey. But they're going to give it to Sergey, probably. That's what somebody else said, too. I feel like they are just because he's got a little bit of notoriety. He fought Mikey Garcia. They tried to build up this fight around that. Kind of. The second well, it is Julius a war of Reed. boxing, so you never know. Listen, man. the well, second I mean, Julius listen, the second Julius realizes that Kazuto Ioka is a Capricorn, the second he realizes he fucked up. He's a Capricorn? Nah, he was born in March. There you go. There, there, there. I was about to say, I can usually spot but a Capricorn. Shh. Kosei looks more like a Capricorn than, than Kazuto. I thought he was an elf. <laughs> <laughs> you look up my guy because Kosei. Hold on. One guy has a 115, 113 Clayton. Okay, okay. Majority uh -oh. draw. Draw. Oh. So then nobody's the mandatory. That's what that that's means. Not, that's not that's not true. There is a mandatory. Who? Kakarov. Ka you Abdul Kakarov is the mando? He he was the mando when he beat Kalazo. They made him mando. But this was still billed as a final eliminator, wasn't it? It was an eliminator. Well then they can't have a draw. <laughs> I'll be damned if they don't have sir uh, if they don't have Kosei's fucking birthday on here. Oh wait, they yes they do. Ah shit, he was born in fucking June. <laughs> so we need to go by the star signs. So when when is Kosei Tanaka's birthday? I'm about to, uh, I looked up Kosei's. I'm about to look up Kazuto's. Just tell me what Kosei's is. June Kosei is a, is June. What's June? June what? June what? Uh let me go back. Yeah, but are you guys using Western astrology or Chinese astrology? See, we're Western, using hey, Western. You don't you, you don't use Chinese with Japanese people. That's disrespectful. Six, fifteen, six. But they got June June fifteenth. Right. So Kosei is a Gemini. Oof. Right. Look 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 up look up Japanese astrology. I bet you it's similar to Chinese. And uh, Tanaka is an Aries, I think. March 20... That's March... Kazuto. Yeah, Kazuto. Yeah, Kazuto's March 24th. That's Pisces. March 24th? That's, that's Pisces. Oh. No, wait. Oh, no, that's Kazuto. not Pisces. Is it? That's not Kazuto Pisces. Kazuto hasn't had that's a Aries. for December. Javier Centrone. Okay. Bro. I'm on Mr. Tanaka's last week. I think it was on that same card now that I remember. <laughs> Hey, look yeah. up Japanese astrology. I bet you you get something different. Oh, I don't want to look up Japanese astrology. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Japanese astrology science. Huh? I really want to oh, hold up with this fucking Yeah, fight. okay. Right. So this is all like mad animals and shit, right? Yeah. So the Japanese zodiac signs.
Well, well they it's have right from the Chinese year. concept. They don't go by the month. They go by the year, man. Right. So do the Chinese. Yeah, they go by the fucking year. Like, you're going to have everybody the same sign for the whole year. No, there's different elements involved, depending. Listen, man. All Certain dates, it's like earth, what is it? Earth, water, metal, fire. All so, like, you'll have, you'll, you'll have, like, the same sign, but because of the element, it changes each sign, and they have different attributes due to the element. Okay, I'm looking at this, right? So, this will tell me the year. The year born will tell you, like, what your star sign is. Right, same thing with Chinese. Right, so I'm gonna find mine real quick. Hold on, what's mine? Mine better be good. I'm gonna be pissed. I know mine. You're crazy. <laughs> mine is mine is what is mine? What year we can say? Ninety three. Ninety three? I think in that year the dog. Don't fucking call me a dog, bro. No, I'm not. I'm just saying that's year of the dog. I thought it was the year of the rooster. Might be. Hold on. Nineteen ninety three. Japanese zodiac. Hold on, that's windy soon. I'm a rooster. And I am also... Hold on here. Here's in the five elements. What do we produce, Nami? A metal rooster. No, I'm not... It doesn't... I'm not a metal rooster. And I'm not a water rooster either. What's going on here? Because that ends with February. So what's mine? Wait, hold on. Yeah. Okay. What's Julius? Yeah, I, I'm I'm a water rooster. Julius, what's yours? What's your year to birth? Twelve. Huh? Wait, are we going by the year? Yeah. Yeah. Eighty two. What wait, what month? Eighty two. December. December? Yeah. December eighty two. Okay, yep. so you, December eighty two. So you ain't you ain't a rooster. What am I? No. You what are I? December eighty two Japanese zodiac. Cause I'm a rooster. Get at me, bro! I'm a big cuck. Right. I'm a fucking probably a water buffalo or some goofy shit. I'll tell you right now. Wouldn't you like to be a water buffalo though? I mean, it's better than being something else, but. <laughs> probably like a garden snake or some shit. You're a dog. I'm a dog. I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> fucking knew oh, it. I knew it. <laughs> and I'm a wet cuck, bro. I'm a water rooster. Well, and I'm I'm you're the monkey. Well, this is the Japanese zodiac. No, this uh, March '68, man. Definitely, it's the same thing. You are the dog, and I'm a rooster. You're a rooster. That makes sense. Yeah. I heard cheetah. Hey, Mark. Yeah, what? What do you got for me, March sixty-eight? I'm pretty sure I already know, but double check. Cheetah. I'll tell you right now, good sir. I'm not. I'm not a dog. In the in the Chinese zodiac. No, you're not. Julius. You're a monkey. Yes, sir. What's my element, though? You want to eat kicks? Kicks is for nerds. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. That's too hard to find. 
Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm a, apparently, I'm a dog. Bro. You, you even know what <laughs> Julius. That doesn't mean like you're a dog. And they say dogs are loyal and some other stuff. Well, that's true. I'm a loyal person. I know they call statements <laughs> that I like because I'm loyal. Because who knows going to, I mean, fuck. Call I heard that. Here I heard we go. That. Here we go. I heard a message. He had a Freudian slip. He literally said, I know Kazuto's going to be Tanaka. No, no, I heard Freudian him. slip. I'm just old. Jesus Christ. No, no, you're, you're not old. You're not old, bro. You're a dog, bro. Dogs don't live that long. <laughs> <laughs> you need to remember, bro. I'm a water rooster, bro. I'm a big, wet cuck. Listen, man. Right? At the end of the day, you can say what you want. Controversial decision. Kose tonight. Oh, right. Look, you can you can say what you want, but as you say, you're getting old. And remember, you're going seen oil. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm like a fucking savant. It's like a savant. You'll see. You you're gonna be, the, the, the worst part is you're not going to want to accept it. You're going to see the fight for, Co for Kazuto. The dog occupies the 11th position in Chinese Zodiac after the rooster, which is me. The rooster. And uh, before the pig. Uh huh. And Chinese. Oh, jeez. Imagine being the pig. <laughs> That's fucked. <laughs> if you're the pig, what does that mean? There, it means there are certain personality traits and certain things that are, you're tied to. Okay, so I'm going to read you what the dog says. All right, come here. Read me what the dog says. The dog is the 11th of all the zodiac. Well, I'm, just saying, I'm not trying to sound like Hey, just read me. What what's the dog do? Does he does he do tricks? <laughs> well, I'm the dog. Do I play fetch? <laughs> I roll over. Do I roll over? He loves getting his tummy scratched. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, who's beating kicks? Where's the when someone tells them to do it. Yeah, man. Yeah, when mommy tells them. Well, read me about this Chinese I dog am. that I'm supposed I'm to be. I'm trying to find a good one that's not asking me to sign into anything. Man, I could have okay. found. Occupy the left of the Chinese though. You have to dog to the lives, character traits such as loyalty, uh -huh. compatibility, and kindness. I am nice. Dogs frequently offer kind words. And you ain't compatible, though. And you <laughs> That's true. I do. I'm trying to give Mark useful advice. He doesn't want to listen to me. Fuck that shit, and he doesn't want to listen. Always listening and lending a shoulder when necessary. I'll lend him a shoulder after Kazuto loses. Dogs often become deeply involved in others' lives. And That's true. Are sometimes perceived as nosy. Ensuring That's true. Others are happy is more important to the dog than wealth, money, or success. All right. That's not true. <laughs> Dogs are determined individuals, <laughs> always wanting to master a new subject That's before true. moving on and always finishing what they start. That's true, because I'm going to finish Kazuto Ioka's career. Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I like how he shit talking Ioka to his wife. Dogs I know, man. <laughs> he just slips it in ever so, ever so gently. <laughs> and have strong morals and ethics. That is true. Morally, I am strong. A a well-kept, organized home is very important. Very important. Keeping a clean home and keeping at work, uh, helping at work stems from the dog's need to be active and involved. That's true. I am involved in the end of Kazuto's career. So dogs involved dogs in spend money wisely. That's true. Passing on luxury goods in favor of practical items. That sounds like me. That's me. That's, That's literally me. me. I'll be honest. I'll be honest, though. I, I do think he spends his money wisely. Betting on this point, now he's going to lose so he can buy me new socks. <laughs> That's very true. That's very true. That's true. That's true. No, it's true. I'm narrow-minded. You can't convince me because you're going to win that fight. You can't convince me. I don't. I don't need to. 
All I need to do is see when you give me that money and I buy new socks. <laughs> um, actually, no, I've got new socks and a toenail. Are they going to have that elfin symbol on them? <laughs> actually, you know what? I might actually, I might actually get the Ring IQ logo so I can walk around on it all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not rational, and that's why you're going to lose. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> Oh boy, did we open up a can of worms with this one? <laughs> you bet on politics. <laughs> uh, that's actually true. What kind of dog food do I eat? Dogs are resilient. Pedigree. <laughs> what does it say? It says a happy dog is a healthy dog, and it's easy to tell by the dog's sad or depressed appearance that it's not feeling right. Mm -hmm. Dogs are resilient, especially with fighting illness. Yeah, that's actually Wasn't true. We just talking about that? Uh, that's kind of true. No, I mean, no. no. Dogs are trustworthy. But they have trouble trusting others. That's, that's so true. true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> A long time before dog feels at ease. Hey Don, do you want to know it how you know? It took me a long he... time to trust Kose, but I trust him. Don, Don, do you want to know how you know he struggles trusting? Because he no. hasn't listened to me about Kazuto and he's only seen Kose boy three times. And I trust and him. He's only watched, and he's only watched Kazuto twice. That's no, that's not true. I've actually seen more <laughs> Kazuto Ioka fights than I have Kose. Huh. This is true. If dogs don't build trust, their judgments get rough towards others. Damn straight. Very true. Damn straight. Oh, you want to hear this. When it comes to romance, dogs often have a, rough, a tough time. Fuck out of here. <laughs> now, that could make sense. That could make sense because you struggle trusting. Right. And do I strike you as having anxiety? Yes. Yeah. yes, you do. Actually, it's the pitch of your voice. <laughs> this is bullshit. I'm not a Chinese dog. Yes. No, I I want to know what mine is though. I'm a Chinese. I'm a Chinese rooster, and I can't find that in online. That's not fair. I'm a fucking Chinese I'm, dog. I'm a, I'm, a I'm a French poodle. <laughs> that ain't true. That ain't true. If you're any type of dog, you you my friend, you're a Shiba Inu. I'm a shy dog. I'm a shy dog. You're a Shiba Inu, though. Bro. bro, you're a doge. Yeah, doge. Yeah, yeah. That, that dog that looks like a hot dog. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> Y'all have the, the same voice and everything. The dachshund. See that you know that's not true. You, yeah, it's not the same thing. <laughs> Julius would be out there framing people for laundry, <laughs> not laundering, actual laundry. <laughs> I could see oh, scientists. Yeah, counselor, interior designer. I can see counselor. Yes, I can see Julius. I can see you sitting there telling every. Every person, what's wrong with them, and how to make it better for money. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. A, a, a and quite well, I bet. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. You want to laugh at this one? It's, it's not in the laugh about, but I can see this. A priest. A priest. <laughs> <laughs> a clerk and a judge. I, I could be a ju I'm very judgmental, so I could be a judge. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, my, Julius, what website is this? Because I need to find mine. What website is that? For this one, it's www.chinesezodiac.com. Okay. I want to find mine and I'll read it out. I told you it would be. It would have been Chinese. They have three. <laughs> 
black elements for dogs. They have a metal dog. I'm the metal dog. A water dog, wood dogs. Hot fire, dog. Fire dogs. Do they have hot dogs? And earth dogs. Yeah, what? see, I'm an earth monkey. I'm an earth dog. I'm a hot dog. Your birthday is 1980. You gonna read out my whole goddamn birthday for the whole in it? Like Jesus Christ! What? They don't know how old you are. You're old. No, they know I'm old, but they don't need to know my damn birthday. Like, <laughs> I'm a hot dog. Oh, ain't it January fifteenth, nineteen eighty-seven, nineteen eighty-two? Your birthday falls under water dog. Less independent water dogs become more self-confident when they're. Part of the pack. That's not true. They're, they're <laughs> in the pack rather than being the pack's leader. That's, you know me well enough to know that's bullshit. They're faithful, affectionate, flexible, and relaxed. Yeah, I'm flexible and relaxed. Pack as fucking annoyed by people as I am. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't fuck like, nah, bruh. It should have said the water dog likes to sit on its couch and eat hot dogs. <laughs> couch. Fucking okay. Are you kidding me? If there was more, you have not met a more nomadic person than me. I've got Go more ahead, right here. Who has to be a fire dog to be a leader? A fire, fire dogs are true leaders. Julius has got a hate boy because it's got to destroy them. <laughs> I'm not a fucking rooster or a water sled. I'm a garden dog. Are you ready for Are you ready for the water rooster, Julius? Because this is me. Let's hear about these water roosters. Because to my knowledge, roosters oh, can't swim. Excuse me, my, <laughs> don't try to play me because I'm a rooster. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a rooster too. That sounds about right. I'm Are you ready? Are you ready, Julius? Good. You ready? Hard working. Resourceful. Okay. okay. Courageous and okay. talented. Roosters are self assured people. They possess powerful personalities and are notoriously dominant. This is true by how Kazuko is going to destroy you based on my prediction. <laughs> but roosters can be conceited creatures, vain and boastful, with a strong egotistical need to constantly be the center of attention. That's not true. That sounds, that sounds about right. Uh oh, here we go. These Chinese zodiacs. Excellent at small talk. Excellent at small talk. They can be the life of any party. Roosters are talkative types, outspoken, frank, open, honest, but a little too blunt at times. That sounds like me. Fuck y'all. <laughs> a polished debater and able to. I can't even read this word. Oh, they spelled them wrong. Right. They what spelled, is the word? They spelled uh, cohesively refute any opinion. They spelled it wrong. The rooster is a talented uh, polygamist. Whoa. Polygamist? Whoa. They're spelling all these words wrong. No, not polygamist. P-O-L-E-M-I-C-I-S-T. Polygamist? I don't know. And could be an excellent well, journalist or writer. Pessimist. No, no. Maybe. It can't be a talented pessimist. It's polemicist. You can be a talented pessimist. There's it's... lots of talented pessimists. <laughs> I could be an excellent journalist or writer. With the rooster's dedication to work well done, he or she would also make a good economist or a gifted administrator. Yo, these people are putting me down to be an assistant. No, because you <laughs> need to administrate things for Kazuto after he loses. It makes perfect sense. <laughs> I'm also an administrator, and you should listen to your admins. Right? <laughs> These people are born organizers, refined and elegant. That ain't true. I was sat down with burgundy slippers, brown pants, a grey windbreaker. <sighs> right. Where am I? Yeah. yeah. They are tidy-minded and like to keep everything neat and ship-shape. Their affairs will be all in order, accounts up to the minute, and documents systematically filed away. 
Yes. Like you're gonna foil away Kazuto, right? You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. No, I'm just gonna foil away Tanaka's horse defeat, bro. Like that's okay. This makes a lot of <laughs> things come to an end. This this makes a lot of right. sense. He's gonna have to file away Kazuto. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a good they run. They function. They function best in an environment where everything is organized and their schedules programmed. When it comes to making decisions of any kind, roosters prefer to carefully consider all sides of the situation before coming to a conclusion, which is why I've picked Kazuto because I've thought about this and I don't act impulsively like you. You are going to be able to see all sides of the bruising on his face after, and you are and you are impulsively going to cry after the the, the absolute destruction of your buck tooth fanboyism, right? <laughs> you shall see. I'm like, remember, Inc. I'm a water sled. I'm very relaxed. I'm a water sled. Very relaxed. I, I'm I'm not worried about it. In conflicts, roosters will push to the extreme but flee before open hostilities break out. I'm still here, is. You're going I'm to still here. With the ref bro. The reflective and analytical abilities sometimes get the better of them. Fuck off! Hey, hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> they must constantly question their point of view to ascertain its validity. The management of finances is perhaps their strength both on a private and professional level. That's not true. I bet $20 and spent $100 promoting it. That's not true. That's, that's um, actually true. We both did that. You no, overanalyzed Kazuto's abilities, and, and as a water sled dog, my relaxed nature knows Kosei's got this because I'm a water when it come, sled When it comes to money, roosters are prudent and careful. They are brilliant managers of other people's money, which I'll do brilliantly when I buy socks. Financial advisors, <laughs> bank management, and accountants would all do well to be born in the year of the rooster. The rooster has the reputation of finding money in the most unlikely places, like Ring IQ's live streams. <laughs> like drawing blood from a stone. <laughs> Getting money out of Julius is like drawing blood from a stone. You're right. In <laughs> You're right. In Vietnam, they say that Thanks to the strength of his beak and claws, the rooster can find a worm in the desert. <laughs> this metaphor goes a long way to explain the continual and restless activity that characterizes him. That would help if I knew what that metaphor fucking meant. It meant because we don't lose because I'm a water sled. <laughs> they have earth, fire, wood, water, and Yo. What kind of rooster are you? Are you a a a a a, 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 a Lego rooster? A Play-Doh rooster? Bro, I'm a water rooster. I'm a big wet cock. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! We hey, got Mark, we... roosters hey, Mark. can't even fucking swim, man. Hey, Mark, read you mine. Know that. I ain't reading yours, bro. Find your own. I can't get it on my phone because I'm using it to talk to you guys. You need to. You need All you need to know is I'm a water sled, and you can't go wrong with a water sled. Kosei, 12 rounds on points. You I listen look it up to on me, my right? laptop. No, hold on. My laptop. Listen, you're the dog. Dogs do tricks. I threw, I threw the bone for you to fetch it to bring me back my 20 books, and I'm going to enjoy it. And that's the <laughs> fucking trick. I'm, I'm performing no, a make trick. Make like a right dog now. and sit. Make like a dog and sit. I'm performing a trick right now. I'm letting you know what the outcome's going to be, but you're a water chicken, and water chickens are very stubborn. <laughs> Look, it's simple enough. It's simple enough, right? You're waking up at dawn for this fight, and I'm the rooster, crowing to let you know what time it is. It's game over. You're when you wake up at the crack of dawn, to caw, caw, for me, all over the place, and you turn that on, and you see that weird buck tooted little fuck get his ass beaten up by an absolute chad who's been fucking supermodels on the side. You gotta <laughs> understand what time it is. You probably shouldn't have me on speaker, by the way, if children are around. I'm not. I'm not PG. 
<laughs> Come on, man. Just read mine, man, real quick. What are you? Earth monkey. Mm, hold on. It says that the earth monkey was oh, boy. Here we go. of foresight, and the earth monkey knows that Kosei Tanaka <laughs> is going to win this fight. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. Come on, man. It says it. It's right there, bro. <laughs> I'll tell you now. Hold on. All right. Earth monkey. The monkey is lively, likable, and witty. Highly sociable. The monkey is talkative, and as a fascinating conversationalist, he attracts a wide circle of friends. People okay. born under this influence, have an innately low boredom threshold, inquisitive in the extreme and forever believing that the grass is greener elsewhere. You know, that makes a lot of sense because you've managed to sit through mine and Julius's live streams without getting bored. That requires a high level of tolerance. <laughs> okay. Mm. Go on, my friend. <laughs> mm. Um grass green or elsewhere, they need to find continual stimulation to keep themselves interested and amused. However, often, monkeys are too clever for their own good and can be meddlesome, opportunistic, and unscrupulous to the point of being tricky and manipulative. Oh! <laughs> hey, you know. That was fucking harsh. <laughs> I got told I'm a little bit vain. He's being told he's a manipulative dick. <laughs> this is because monkey types possess acute psychological personifications which enables them to read people like books in particular women in particular women under the monkey influence can play rather subtle games with members of the opposite sex and although monkeys give the impression of getting on fabulously with everybody this great rapport is often nothing but a ruse. Monkeys are, in fact, egotistical and selfish. They tend to be lazy, concentrating Ouch. on small Jesus matters Christ, while ignoring bro. more important issues. They ignore obstacles finding them beneath their consideration. Playful, <laughs> even obliging at times, the monkey hides the poor opinion he has of others beneath his apparent friendliness. Oh, oh who you got to talk about this time? I don't know, really man, think about it. Who wrote this? I don't know, man, but I, I just got tore up. <laughs> he distrusts people born under any sign and considers himself to be superior to all of them. He has oh, plenty of intelligence and a fantastic ability to pull the wool over people's so eyes. Dan, is this true? No, not at all. He is so <laughs> awful that right. he can even fool the dragon who is strong, stubborn, and no fool himself and resist the magnetism of the tiger whom he teases unmercifully. Monkeys are highly adaptable and versatile, enthusiastic about everything. They spend their time broadening their minds and they're especially fascinated with art. They look refinement, originality, and luxury. You know, the more I read this, the more I'm thinking this is actually Julius. <laughs> I don't think I'm superior to anybody, man. I really don't. Julius Bro, who the fuck wrote that horoscope, man. Julius, hey. <laughs> do, do, do you feel superior to anybody, Julius? <laughs> hey, listen, Julius is a water sled. I'm relaxed. <laughs> I'm the I'm diabolical being... one, apparently. <laughs> Hold Bro, they on. got to sound like Mr. Burns. <laughs> Monkeys are highly adaptable, adversatile, enthusiastic about everything. They spend their time broadening their minds, and they are especially fascinated with art, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. right. They like refinement, originality, and luxury, inventive and intelligent. Those born in these years can solve most problems quickly and skillfully, and they're able to accomplish much in business. Monkeys shamelessly acknowledge their attraction to money. They quickly assimilate facts and figures, picking up new skills and techniques almost instantaneously. In business, it is their op opportunis op opportunism, coupled with their keen competitive instinct, that gives them an eye for that tiny opening into which only monkeys can insinuate themselves. Once they have instilled themselves, it is their ability to turn their heads to anything that will bring them ultimate success and, in many cases, even make their fortune. 
The monkey can succeed in any profession, politics, diplomacy, industry, trade. None of them will have any secrets for him. He can try anything and anything will work, especially if he has been fortunate enough to have a higher education. Though the renowned adaptability of the monkey personality takes those born under this sign into a variety of occupations, many will naturally gravitate towards show business. This is because monkey-born people have a compelling need to be noticed. Unfortunately, because they are such audacious people and care very little about their reputations, it does not matter much to them whether the impression they create is one of pleasure or of shock. It is simply a case of the more publicity they can generate around themselves, the happier they are. Now, you see, the more I read this, right? I'm going to say this. The more I read this, the more I'm starting to realize that this isn't a monkey horoscope. What this is, my friends, is the personality traits of a sociopath. I mean, that's <laughs> what they're describing. Did you read, like, how it's the fuck? It's fucking ridiculous. How the fuck could they characterize all the people born in that year as being like, bro, like, bro, like, nah, man, like, <laughs> that's fucked, man. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Listen, man, I'm going to stick to my goddamn star sign. Fuck these Chinese dogs and wet cocks and <laughs> tiger monkeys and all this fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Get these hards apparently of a wood rat. That's fucking sick. Say what? Get these hands as a wood rat. I'm a watercock. <laughs> I'm a fucking wet dog. Nobody <laughs> like I'm a wet dog. Bro, I'm with it here, bro. Did you see did you hear bud? Like I'm I'm really reliable. <laughs> Intelligent. <laughs> Good with finances. Dance a sociopath. Julius, you're a dog who smells bad. Yeah, and I'm judgmental apparently, but I could be a judge because I'm very judgmental. That makes a lot of sense, though. Somebody, somebody in the comments said, "What the fuck is going on?" <laughs> yeah, Ju Julius, use the star signs. We deserve star signs. This is a boxing show. God damn it! So I think on that note, we can call it a night. Dog, big cock, all that shit. <laughs> all right, all right, tiger monkey. This is wet cocks. This is, right, this, is this is the wet dog. This is the this is the wet cock signing out. Peace. <laughs> this is the dirty I'm monkey who signed it out. Good night. The tiger monkey is signing out, and I am judgmental dog signing out. <laughs> <laughs> Night, fellas. I'm judging you while I sign out. Oh. <laughs>